So on this um, cop thriller I was watching, an officer was standing there with his detective mate, and he said, "He says the victims were dismembered and sacrificed on an altar made of antlers." And the detective goes, "Dear God, most likely yes." Oh, oh, that yeah, that took a while. Yeah, that, that went round the that went round a couple of times. That's that's a that's a that's a that's a brandy pun. That is, you have to swirl it around the glass a little bit before you get the old aromas off of that. That's that was good. The old, the old oh, that's a, ra- was that's a radio a info. That's a radio information to land. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hello everyone, and welcome to the Black Dog Podcast, version two, episode twenty-seven. I'm Lee. I'm Darren. I'm Jim. I'm Elton. And this week we will see how everyone's week's been. We will look at some feedback, if we've got any, um, on from last week's episode, which was Splinter. Um, uh, and then we will move on to this week's film, which is the last of our indeterminate weeks of horror, which is Elton's choice, which is... Lots of people stuck in the lift. Lots of shamalama ding dongs blokes stuck in a lift. Yeah, devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll be so we'll be reviewing that film. Yes, we will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be finding out. It. It, we'll I, be I, finding I, out if it elevated his status as a director. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this is going to escalate quickly, I can tell. <laughs> right, okay. So, yeah, we'll be seeing how that's gone. Um, and just before we do any of that stuff, let me just put right up front, because I always forget these things and I always stick them at the end, the um, parish notice, I'm away next week, so uh, we will not be doing a podcast next week. Um, right, so let's see how everyone's week's been. And this week we will start with you, Mr. Jim. How are you, sir, and how was your week? Uh, I've not been too bad, but uh, mm-hmm. I'm fairly busy. This is my busy season, Halloween, obviously. Yes, I was going to say, it must be your, your, this is your Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> kind of, actually, my Christmas is my Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but yes, but um, I've been very good, even though, uh, and done lots of work, even though um, I did take it in my head, as I occasionally do, kind of, oh. Not played Quake Three Arena for ages. Oh my lord! <laughs> Can I get it working in widescreen and all that muffetry? Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, and I have got it working. And now there's all kind of there's modern and official patches. In fact, someone's rewrote the engine entirely for modern <laughs> machines, so you don't have to do. So it will run in what native widescreen uh, with high resolution textures and all magic new graphic stuff. And it's kind of this is really good and it runs really well. Yeah. Yep. Despite mm. having not played it for oh fifteen years, yeah. the old magic still there. It's the mm. bugger with the railgun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like riding a bike; you never forget how to frag somebody. No. <laughs> is, so, is there is there still an online community, or are you using just AI bots? Or oh, I've just I've just been going through the um the actual sort of in game mm. tournament against the bots. Just mm. saying, oh yeah, cause, oh I remember this level. Where, where's the quad damage? Oh yeah. Ah, there you There's go. There's the camping spot. <laughs> 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 Real you motherfuckers die. <laughs> That's been fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, mainly my time has also been taken up with um, my new little doggy, mm-hmm. who um, it, we'll have had three weeks today, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's going really, really well. Of, um, yep, uh, she's really settling in, and I mean, I think I posted. <laughs> A few, well, posted quite a lot of pictures. I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when we got from the dog's trust, you were saying, "Oh, she got space issues. She won't be a very cuddly dog." Mm. Who comes for cuddles every morning? Yeah, and we'll have her just flop across you. And now he's actually sort of doing that over the shoulder look, going, "You stop stroking me." Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we, uh, I would say, round um, uh, a friend's house. I was actually sorting. Some stuff at my late friend's house, including um, I ended up mm-hmm. coming away with a, a lot of mementos and uh, a chunk of his record collection. So I had to ring <laughs> Teresa and say, "Can you pick me up in the car? I've got to have a lot." Yeah. Um, and she didn't really want to leave the dog on her own. We we had mm. said kind of, well, mm. 
we've got to take her in the car at some point. We're a bit wary because going in the car might, she might think, oh God, she's sending me back. I'm going back yeah. to dark place. Yeah. Um, as he was, Teresa, do you want to go in the car? Pick up daddy. Yep. She was mm-hmm. up for that. She was quite happy to try and get in the car. Couldn't quite manage it. So Teresa mm-hmm. actually just, she let Teresa pick her up, which is something we'd, we thought we'd oh. never, we thought that would be a long way down the line. But mm. um, she trusts us that much. Yeah, not a not a not a growl, not a whimper. Yeah, 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 mommy, pick me up, put me in the car. Right, let's go. Sat on the car seat, sat down, quite happy in the car, lovely, nice. Um, let's see, we she goes out like three times a day, and we sort of met quite a few other dogs. And at first, every time she met a dog, she used to bark, mm. uh, not in an aggressive way, but more like it's another dog, it's another dog sort of way. But now she's sort mm. of settled down and been saying hello. We've made some friends with some of the local dogs we've seen a couple of times, and yeah, let strangers pat her. And it's going, kind of, we're being just going, don't don't pat her, she might have your hands off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, she's absolutely fine. Nice, you know what I mean? She's really, really settled down, and um, it's kind of um. You know, just kind of, she learned so quickly, mm. you know what I mean? And she's a very smart dog, and she's worked out kind of, okay, mm. you know, I don't, you know, these people are okay. I, I, can, I can stop the devil dog act <laughs> when necessary. Nice. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. So we're really, really pleased. It's um, uh, She's a kind of a different dog to the one we got right now. She's a, a lot yeah. really, a lot brighter, a lot happier. Her behavior's changing. Cheeky yeah. fuck, mine. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but good as gold at the same time, you know what I mean? And it's just yeah. uh, uh, we're learning her language and she's learning ours. But because she mm. has, she was at a good home for many years at some point in the past, and mm. it's just finding the right words she understands for things. Yeah, it's like she often hesitates about coming on the couch, and we yeah. worked out you have to you have to include the word up because uh-huh. up it says you're allowed up. Mm. That's what she understands. And if you don't, if you say, come on the couch, she's like going, I want to, but you've not said the right word. Yeah. They come on up. Yep, no problem. Uh. <laughs> Leaps up like a like a superhero, you know. So, <laughs> but it's all just little things like this that um, we sort of working out and just finding, you know, you turn little keys in little locks. And yeah. she's remembering being actually in a nice home and what goes on in a nice home. And uh, it's just all, you know, so it's, it's all going really well. It's just been... Uh, Nice. It's really lovely, and we've got a really good dog. <laughs> Yay! Mm. Nice. Oh well, that's wicked. That's that's really good. I mean, it's it's nice to hear that she's getting better and better. And um, we've just uh, we've just had a dog go back um, go back to her family this week. The one that was going to bark last week or week, but didn't. oh yes, <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. And it was again. It was quite funny. It was just as you as you say, you start to learn their language, but just as you just as you did. You, she's kind of gone, so it's like bugger. <laughs> I need to write. I need to write that down in case we get her again. But it's <laughs> the, the lexicon. But yeah, no, it's really cool. Excellent. Oh well, lovely. Anything else, sir? No, I'll leave it on that heartwarming note. Ah, oh, that's lovely. We we like a pup date. That's very good. <laughs> um, Elton, over to you then, sir. Over to me. Well, I have watched two things and mm. found something. What would you like Ooh. first? Well, let's 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 go for the what two things have you f- watched? Because if you found something, there, I I feel I feel there's a story there. Okay. Yeah, is it is it preceded by Doctor? I've found something. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you, know. you never know. Mm. No, Doctor, I I lost my King Edward uh, potato up my bottom again. <laughs> Again, oh, well, again, yes. <laughs> oh dear, Mr. could you fish around for it, please, <laughs> Mister Elton? Sir, it happens every Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Weren't you here last week for the same thing? <laughs> no, that was <laughs> that was a Hoover. Hoover. Yeah, it was New, <laughs> New Jersey Royal. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> no, honestly, honestly, I had crumbs on my groin and I was just testing out this Dyson vacuum cleaner to see how <laughs> to see how clean it could get my trousers when all of a sudden it pulled my zip down and well the you know the rest mm. is fairly obvious yeah yes. they're very intelligent them hoovers they, yeah, are, they are yes mm. they groupy know. groupy things yeah yeah yeah. Y- yeah don't get the U-Tree 9000 it just sucks anything <laughs> it's oh, really geez. not good right okay right. <laughs> um, the things I've seen yes uh, I have I watched Rocket Man. Okay, the Elton John thing. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Go on then. Okay. Very good. 
I really yeah. enjoyed it. I don't yeah. like musicals. Mm. I haven't seen Bohemian Rhapsody. Not yet, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this was fun. I really, really enjoyed this. And yeah. it's so weird hearing my name come out of a TV. When, <laughs> I, I don't get that. I, I don't have that. But when someone's shouting, Elton, Elton, and, oh, okay, yeah, that's mm -hmm. in there. That's what everyone else feels like when they hear their name. I never yeah. get that. Yeah. So uh, that was nice to hear for once. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, man, I would recommend that. Mm. really good and uh the dude who plays Elton John he just falls into that character yeah that's um that's a Taron Egerton from that's um, it, yeah. from Kingsman yeah yeah he just falls into it and you're just okay fine that's yeah mm. it's amazing I really really enjoyed it so yeah, oh, yeah so get your I. mix on that yeah yeah uh the other thing that I watched I've been binging a uh, long way up Oh, oh, this is like the, the third installment of the Long Way series, which I don't think they planned on at the bit, very beginning. But it's uh, Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor oh, going yes. from the tip of the South Americas all the way up to Los Angeles on oh, yeah. electric bikes this time. So they, so they get about 50 yards out from the coast and then that's that's it. They're done yeah, for about six years. Oh, okay. <laughs> they just don't, they're just not, not even wireless. They're just plugged into the wall continuously. Yeah. But the, the frustrating thing about it, and I thought everyone knew this, when, when batteries get cold, they don't work well. No. It took them two weeks to work this out. Ah. <laughs> on okay. a, sitting on a big battery... It then took them two weeks to realize, oh, if we just put the bikes indoors and charge them, they actually charge up instead of putting them in a shed and charging them outside where they're cold. Mm. So that's good. Let's, mm. let's go with that. But it's, it's, it's even more beautiful than all the other shows that they've done before. The others look great, but they're on like DVD quality, etc. Yeah. But this, where it's all, every single little camera you've got is probably a 4k camera that you can muck around with and stick on your helmet and no mm. not like that <laughs> i was gonna <laughs> say yeah yeah you were only in here last week for the fucking potato <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> now he's now he's got a gopro <laughs> what the fuck's next yeah and now on. you know what it looks like on the inside <laughs> <laughs> i thought the only smell bad on the outside <laughs> 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 no um it, it does look glorious that you know they got the drones now because mm -hmm. i think the last time they did it was like 2007 and that i don't think that tech was right up there just yet mm -hmm. um and the first one was like 2002 i think mm -hmm. but um yeah it, it's i'm really enjoying it. it it hasn't got the drama that you would expect mm sometimes it's a little bit manipulated but not too bad yeah not, I, I think it's more manipulated for shits and giggles but the the interesting thing they're doing is they're trying to do it fully electric and right. they have support vehicles behind them called rivens and their prototype electric you know, suvs right and they're really nice but obviously they have trouble with the charging as well it's interesting to watch them struggling with the charging and trying to get into a routine and we we all kind of need to get into this charging thing don't we but unfortunately uh, petroleum is high on the agenda at the moment yeah well i mean uh, not w not wishing to derail or get into it too much but we i one of the things that i'm doing f f at work at the moment is a whole thing about turning like uk infrastructures into sort of more charging friendly and and getting getting quick charge units and all these kind of things, so mm. so that everyone can move across to cars and you know, electric cars and electric vehicles. Yep. And it's yeah, that's the that's the problem, the speed at which they're doing it. But they're now looking at things like um, wireless queue charging. You know, like the, you get with the mobile phones. Yeah, you just pull over on a, on a space. Yeah, and yep. it's literally queue charging your car through the floor where yep. you park and stuff like that, and getting getting quick charging out of that. Well, unfortunately, I think this is, if there's no demand for the charging, then they're not going to put any more chargers in, are they? So until yeah. that demand is required, then they're not going to yeah. up the game. 
Well, I think I think it's probably a conversation for a, for a more car driven podcast. But I yeah. I get the I get the sense that that it's not going to be a choice anymore once once diesels taxes go up and all that kind of thing. Which is oh yeah, to happen. I, I think It'll... we're we're moving in the right direction. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, eco friendly podcast here. Yes. Now, please, everyone, take your yamcha <laughs> and sit in a circle. Um, right. Anyway, go on. Carry on. Don't we have to like join our rings and uh, get Captain Planet? No, not like Hang that, on. Darren. Hang not on. like that. Hang on. So we've had a potato, a GoPro, <laughs> uh... Mister McManus again. I'm going to start giving you a fucking loyalty card, mate. <laughs> we've been thinking about installing one of those rotating doors. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you're full visit, you get a microwave. <laughs> a set, of, <laughs> set of coffee cups. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go on in, Elton. And uh, the last thing, uh, I found something. Now, mm. earlier this year, <laughs> yeah. no, <laughs> yeah. earlier this year, <laughs> um, me and my brother uh, raided my dad's shed, took all the stuff out and sorted it all out, went through it and you know, mm. shared it all out. And this was at least 30 years, maybe more, of collecting tools, etc. Mm-hmm. I'd say 50 years of collecting tools. And yeah. I'm unable to throw any tools away. They're all in that bloody shed. Yeah. And so uh, we, we, we've dished them all out. We've got rid of the shed. Everything's clear. And you finally think it's done. Mm. Brilliant. Yeah. And then your mum asks you to go up into the loft. Oh. And now, bear in mind, we've been in the loft several times, and we know it's clear. Mm. Absolutely know it's clear. Yeah. And the last time I went up there, I found the Sabutio, which I put photos on the Facebook That's right. uh, of a little while ago. And so that was the last little gem that we thought we'd found. That We thought, that is it. Yeah. So... My mum, because she's having like a new roof put on the house, she asked me, just go up there, just make sure it's clear, make sure there's nothing else in there. And uh, because I know that there's some empty boxes. And so I went up into the loft, pulled out these empty boxes, right? Yeah, empty box, empty box, empty box, chucked them downstairs. She got rid of them. And I I knew that there were some books in plastic bags as well. So I looked at the the plastic bags, lifted up the plastic bags and... (gasps) there's a big munitions crate up there. Big yellow munitions crate, I thought. Right. M- munitions? Yeah, like... Uh, um, ammo. Yeah, just crate. like a... Yeah, a- ammo. Yeah, ammo explodey, crate. gun, bang, bang yeah. munitions. Yeah, That sort of shape. I'm not saying it is... It's got no numbers or letters or um, uh, markings to say that it is munitions or anything like that, but right. it is that sort of shape, and, and it's one of these big, heavy metal cases where you you get one person on one side on the handle and the other person on the other side of the handle and then carry it to your big gun basically <laughs> yes and right found one of them in like a big um water old old water uh, box I, mm. I can't think of the uh, water tank there we go sorry mm. and so i was like oh bollocks what the hell is in this so i get it down the ladder gingerly because it weighs a ton as well mm. was it get it down. no it was not ticking <laughs> <know why>, okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, get it downstairs yeah. open it up and fuck me as if it's full of tools again oh geez more tools You're right and so we we're going through these, but these, these yeah. tools, these are all like engineering tools used on yeah. lathes and mills and stuff like that. So they're, they're pristine. <laughs> they're, mm. None of them are rusted or anything like that. And they, there's some pretty nice gear in here. I've looked on eBay, not that I'm going to sl- flog it or anything like that, but looked on eBay. Yeah. And there's a couple of hundred quids worth of tools just in this little crate. Nice. So um, looking through it and I was like, what the fuck am I going to be doing with this now? I, I don't I, I, I don't know. I, I've got to wait until my brother comes up and we go through this, but when am I going to start? Uh, stop finding tools in this bloody house? That's the thing. <laughs> the, the it's little pockets on. everywhere. 
Admit it, Owen, this is the one time you were glad to find um, tools in that particular type of box. <laughs> not, <laughs> and not the alternative. Yeah. You know. Shelves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I so, thought... Yeah. I thought it's great plutonium. I was like going to say, I thought you were going to get that that crate down the stairs, and then suddenly a little little VW van will come around the corner, and you go, <gasps> Libyans! They found me. Libyans. <laughs> <laughs> have to drive off in your, De- in your De- DeLorean, and Mum just starts bouncing around, going, "Great Scott! Great Scott! They found me. I don't know how they did it, but they did. <laughs> run, Marty, run!" Yeah. Yeah, anyway, sorry, mate. Go, no, 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 we, we just found all this stuff. So uh, it's beautiful kit. It really mm. is. It's just uh, what we think is that because my mum and dad moved into that house mm. 83. Mm. It looks like they moved in. My dad went in, up into the loft, put that in the loft, and it was never touched. Because no. I've never seen that box up there. Right. But it is, it's got all of his names on all, all the, the equipment, etc. But yeah, it's a couple of hundred quid's worth of, of kit up there. And I think it was just stuck up there in the 80s and then forgotten about. It's a proper barn find. Yeah. Are you, are you, sure, are you sure it's not like cursed? It's like, you know, the, it, was put up, it was put up there for a reason. Yeah, there's a reason why it was in the big, heavy box that yeah, nobody opened exactly. before. Exactly, they're all cursed tools, and each one has a different curse on them. Yeah, yeah. Every time I use that spanner, I'm gonna rack my nail, uh, rack my knuckles on on a, a piece of metal. Aren't that's I? that's right. And every time you use the drill bits, the drill bits are gonna spark and set fire to your clothes. Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as as this last month, as this last month of, video, of films and every subsequent <laughs> October not taught you anything. Yeah. Like, seriously. I, but it was too exciting not to open it. That's the thing. <laughs> I mean, fucking hell, this time last year we were watching Ethan Hawke in Sinister and he found a load of videotapes up in the loft. Oh, man, look, that would have been how creepy. well that ended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that went well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it could be t- it could be you know DIY disasters sinister edition. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I mean you've been doing a lot of walking in the uh, in the dark lately, mate. I just I'm just warning you now, you know. Oh fucking dog! Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean you know next thing you know there'll be a ghostly Tommy Walsh coming across the fields at you, going, "Oh, got to put up some MDF." Yeah. No, that sodding dog. Right. Mm. Every time I take him out for a walk. <laughs> I, I I wrap up really warm because I know I'm going to be cold. And mm. so I wrap up really warm, put on my head torch and my uh, woolly hat and stuff like that. And we go out and he goes, ah, do you know what? Let's just go around the block or down to the green. I'll do shit. You clear it up and we'll come back. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. So this time I didn't put a coat on. I just put my body warmer on, went outside and he's like, yeah, I fancy an adventure today. <laughs> oh, sod you. <laughs> 45 minutes later, I'm halfway home. I'm like, jeez, man. <laughs> and then he wants to sniff every bloody blade of grass well, as well. Yeah. Like, of course. Stop it. Yeah. Got to read the P-mail. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, go get, the, go get the doggy telephone, the old telegram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So, so you've got low grade hypothermia, is what you're saying now? Kind of. Yes. Nice. Okay. Well, yeah. we'll we'll listen out. We'll listen out for the wheezy. We won't send a COVID test van round. No, please don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to your week, though. On that. Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, that, that was a uh, thing. Yeah. That that might be going. That might be coming in. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that was my mm. week. Okay, brilliant. Okay, well then, in which case we shall move on to Darren because Darren wasn't here last week. So no, um, no. Uh, Darren, we'll... Darren's had quite the week this week. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how's quite, it been? Quite mate? Two weeks this week. Um, well, you know what? Well, I'll start off with the uh, with the light and fluffy uh, stuff. Um, yeah, we've had two close calls with COVID. Oh in yeah, the past two weeks. Yeah. Nice. Um, a friend of ours daughter got sent home from school because she Mm -hmm. was displaying covid like symptoms Mm -hmm. and it's someone that's within our sort of bubble your bubble yeah a bubble and we'd seen them fairly recently oh cool so um yeah they they had the test done and everything turns out not a problem it was fine it's okay um (laughs) 
I, I mean, I can understand schools mm-hmm. not wanting to take a risk. Yeah. You know, this, is, this is how careful they're being just to put, you know, if, you, if you're wondering sort of like how they jump on this sort of thing just mm. to make sure it doesn't actually become a problem. Um, yeah. All the, uh, the girl had, she, she basically, she had a sore throat. She was losing her voice and she was mm. in the canteen and she said, oh, I, I can't <clears throat> taste anything. And oh, it's like, shit. well, it's, that's probably because of the cold you've got. Yeah. You know, with the sore throat and you're losing your voice and stuff like this, which are, mm. you know, signs of COVID anyway, but school sent her home. And so we had mm. this rather tense sort of 24 hours waiting for the results to come back. Mm-hmm. And it was fine. It was no problem. So that was great. It was like, wow, I can actually go out and buy food now. Yep. So that's great. Um, mm-hmm. And then secondly... Um, Ree's mum got oh. told that somebody oh. who works with her had yep. been diagnosed with COVID-19. Oh, blimey. Um, but it's fine. Um, her mum got tested and she was perfectly all right. So I think, you know, the, the sort of the distancing rules and everything where she works had been followed. So hmm. it's it's all good. So, cool. um But yeah, it's like, oh, for fuck's sake, seriously? Yeah. You, uh, you're going to come at us with that? <laughs> oh, fucking yep. hellfire. So, so there was that. Yeah. Um, so, third thing this week, mm-hmm. uh, Re got herself a tattoo, which is something she's wanted for ages. Right. And so she finally made the leap and she's been researching all of this for what she wants and stuff yep. like that. And, you yep. know, just really going for it. And she had one done and uh, it looks really good. And it's what? like a, pa- it's a patch of like leopard skin. On okay, uh, I, I saw the photo. It looked very mm-hmm. cool. It is. It's really good. They've even put like they've even mm. made it look like she's actually got fur on her shoulder as well, and that's the way the guy's drawn it. But yeah, the the art is absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. So um, we're just caring for you, doing the post care stuff for that now. Dare I ask on what part of the body that um, tattoo is? It was on the shoulder. Ah, so right. Well, that's we okay. Yeah. That's cool. That's so cool. there we go. And she was like, oh, when do I tell my mum? When do I tell my mum and dad? <laughs> I've had this done. <laughs> and she, she's told them. But they were like, oh, yeah, no, that's that's cool. That looks really good. So, um, you know, cool. no need to worry there. But, uh, yeah, that was that was good. Mm-hmm. Um, thirdly, and mm-hmm. I think we're, we're becoming, maybe we should be sponsored by David Attenborough as a podcast. Uh, right. Okay. <laughs> because mm. uh, we have acquired a new pet. <laughs> right. In the household. But, uh not of the small furry kind, more of the small leathery kind. Uh, we have a bearded dragon. A, a, a bearded dragon? A bearded dragon. So I am the daddy of dragons or the granddaddy of dragons because it's Maria's <laughs> dragon. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, right. wow. I didn't know it was going to be that small when they, when they brought it home. I mean, I had no idea it wasn't going to be that big, but... Flipping out, it wasn't even bigger than my finger. They're tiddly when they start off. They are. They're tiny. Yeah. And it's like got little fingers, and it's got little tools, and little legs, and it yeah. grasps onto things. And it's yeah. like, oh, look at it. And yeah. I'm doing that while it's chasing down crickets and eating them. Well, actually, yeah. I was going, go on, my son. Go on. Get in there. Go to rip its fucking legs off. <laughs> um yeah. yeah, you know, just a little bit of encouragement. The cricket's up against the glass going, let me out, you madman! Let me out, exactly. you monster! <laughs> exactly. But, uh, yeah, it's, mm. it's still trying to learn its trade at the moment. So it's been a bit successful catching the crickets, but it's it's still learning how to stalk them. And it's mm. really quite, <laughs> it's it's really quite entertaining mm. watching them, the sort of, like, you know, watching the, uh, uh, we've given it, well, Maria's given it a name. Uh, Tango mm. is the name. I mm. said, why is that? I said, you know that it's named after a drink? She went, no, I've named it that, uh, because of the drink. I've just named it Tango. Named so, it Tango. So like, That's fine. Okay, so we have Tango. If we get another one and stick it in a separate cage, we call that Cash, I'm sure. Well, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> or you've been. Or yeah, you've, you've been. been. Yeah, you've <laughs> yeah. been. <laughs> That's you've takes been. two, two. Tango. Yeah, it takes two, two. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. Great stuff. Nice work. But, um, I've got a great little picture now of um, 
in the tank. We, Ree's gone and bought uh, a small set of Jurassic Park gates for oh, the. I've the seen enclosure. those from lizards. Yeah, yeah, they tied it. And I, do you know what? Today, just before it went off to take itself <laughs> off to sleep, it actually crawled up to the gate and stood in there, and it oh did a little, It turned God. to the side, so I, it's got, I've got a profile shot. It's like I said to it, "Stay there," and it did. And I got the camera, and took a picture, and that's it. So, so, uh, so it's Jurassic Park. We've spared Jurassic every Park. expense. <laughs> this is it. We can make we can make our own black. We can we should open Black Dog Studios. Jurassic um, Park. Jurassic Park. Nice. But uh, yeah, it's it's like the gates are all busted down. It's like one of those. It's a uh, it's the the broken open gate. It just looks like <laughs> Jesus <laughs> come through. <laughs> Che- cheap as chips Jurassic Park nice yep. this is it the uh, the budget of 20 pence yeah and a, and a, a tin of spam that's <sighs> it that's that's what you've got here yeah I'll just I'll just I'll just throw some some white talcum powder on my face and then I can be the Richard Attenborough oh yep. yes the the T-Rex he's been measured at least two and a half inches an hour <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah <laughs> nice I'm, I'm going to get that and just have that playing constantly. The bad harmonica version <laughs> yeah, of the exactly. Jurassic Park theme tune. Yeah. yeah, that's right. But no, it's, a, it, it's a fantastic little pet. Very, quite, you know, very chill. Uh-huh. Apart from if you come at it and cause a shadow over the top, then it thinks oh. you're a bird. And it fucking bolts for it. It's like, mm. ah! Like that. Right. So, um, so yeah, lots yeah. of, I'm sure there's going to be lots of adventures with this, especially when it gets bigger. Yeah. Um, once he once he breaks out the cage, he yeah, starts exactly. breathing radioactive fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Scree donk <laughs> as he kind of goes walking around. Yeah, starts <clears throat> chasing American army jeeps, and you know the yeah. president brings in the soldiers and it, decides to take down Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. That's it. it looks like it'll fit in green screen. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Someone call Anne Hathaway quickly. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It starts tapping itself on the head, <laughs> doing scratching. <laughs> and off to Seoul. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. So um, that's that's the physical world. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now we come into the entertainment world. Mm-hmm. I've seen a number of movies this weekend. Okay. Five in total, including the one we're doing for the cast. Yes. But uh, very quickly, I'll go over them. Um, mm-hmm. First one, and these are all on. Um, these are all on Netflix, I think. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. Um, first one, Disappearance at Clifton Hill. Mm-hmm. It is a bit of a mystery uh, film. Uh, mm-hmm. It starts off with a, a very young girl seeing a boy getting mm-hmm. kidnapped by two very strange individuals. Right. And this event kind of stays with her throughout her life. And yeah. through one or two things happening, she, when she gets a lot older, she starts investigating what happened to that kid because it plays mm-hmm. her dreams and stuff like this. Mm. And uh, I can't remember what it is. It kicks off the investigation, but she goes and just tries to track this, you know, see what happened to him. Did he die? Is he alive? Whatever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, that was good. I, good I, saw the, I saw the sequel to that, actually. What's that? The Disappearance of Bernie Clifton and Benny Hill. <laughs> <laughs> A big black fucking all. <laughs> yeah, and they both they both rode off on a big giant ostrich. <laughs> so there we go. I'm sure I'll I'll look for that coming to a coming to a very cheap and cheap come at the Brit box soon. Yeah, it disappears. <laughs> Bernie Clifton and Benny Hill. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. well, don't don't worry about it. This is, this is another Black Dog Podcast Studios one. I'm sure it will be. Yes, that's that's our version of it. Yep. So there we go. Uh, so the second one um, I see, which is a sequel to something I saw a while ago, which I should really recommend for us to watch, mm-hmm. um, and it's called, it's the uh, the Babysitter Killer Queen, mm. which was the sequel to the Babysitter, which was out about two years ago. And no, this right. takes place exactly two years after the events of uh, the Babysitter. Uh, I li- I like it. I like the way it, it, it's sort of like its quirkiness. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the comedy in it. It's quite sort of yeah with it in its references um it doesn't beat you over the head with them but no. um you know it's like oh ah yes they mentioned that thing ah, there, right which is quite relevant so you saw the first one presumably yes i did yes and okay 
I thoroughly enjoyed that. It's it's quite it's it's um it doesn't take itself seriously at all. Mm. Not at all. Um and uh yeah, so that's uh, another recommendation. If you saw the first one and wonder what the sequel's like, it's more of the, the first one. Right. Really. Um so yeah, very, very good. <laughs> okay. Uh and it had uh, you know, Stephen Amell, the guy who plays Arrow. Yes. You remember he was at they were both in <clears throat> Code Eight. Yes, they were, yeah. 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 yeah, he's in this one as well. He makes a return oh, yeah. into it. And it is in the trailer, so this isn't really giving anything away. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, so he's in that. And funnily enough, talking about Stephen Amell and his brother, mm. um, we watched also Project Power. Oh, right, yeah. Yes, indeed, which could be called the other Code 8, really. This is how Code 8 should have been done. Right. Um, and this one is all about a world where there's a drug that can give you five minutes of super ability. Mm-hmm. Right? We're from taking this pill, which mm-hmm. you twist, stick in your mouth. But you never know what you're going to get Okay, oh, for right. the first time you have it. And there is a little bit of a... Um, there's a there's a possibility that you're you won't live through the experience either. It's oh. like you could, you could take it and explode, or you could take it and you can become super strong, <laughs> or you become uh, bulletproof, or you can become you know you like the Human Torch, right. that sort of thing. Yeah, um, and it does have some interesting ranges of powers. Yeah, in it, uh, some of the one or two they go. It's not. I mean, they've got the usual stuff in there, but. There's one or two that they kind of like, well, this is also a power. Mm. Like, oh, right. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Again, much better than Code 8. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I mean, yeah, I suppose they could make a series out of this, but I think it's it's good just having it as that one film. It works. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay. So, yeah. Um, and finally... Final film. Right, finally. This one called At Alive. Oh, hashtag alive. Yeah. Uh, well, it's the at sign alive. Is it? Oh, uh, oh yeah. is it? Okay. Yeah, At Alive, um, which is, uh, it's very similar to a film I saw about a guy in France who gets trapped in a flat during a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, I remember um, you mentioning that one. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is in Asia, um, and it's it's like this, this gamer who is, it, it kind of just goes in. It doesn't fuck about. It really kind of gets going straight away. Um, gamers online with these mates, and they're all like, suddenly one of them's going, surely that's special effects. That can't be mm. real. It's mm. like, what are you talking about? He goes, have you not seen the news? Mm. And then, of course, you see there's this zombie mm. outbreak. Like yeah. This infection that goes on, turns everybody into complete, sort of like cannibalistic nut jobs. Yeah. Um, and so he has to try and survive. Mm. And it's like he's his mum has told him, like his mum and dad have all gone away and they've left him a note to say, you know, you go out and get some shopping. And he hasn't done so. He's been playing games all this time. So he's fucking well. His fridge is empty. Um, yep. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it, 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 so he's like, he's, he's fucked. Like, he's like, what the fuck am I going to do? You see me pulls out. He's, like, he's got like... He's got small piles of bags with sweets and mm. what have you. Yeah. Um, I've got to say, I think I think zombie movies have found uh, a new home yeah. in Asia now. I think Asian zombie movies are where it's at mm. for the genre itself. I think there's a lot of interesting things coming out of there, if only for the way they portray the zombies and the way that they actually move. Mm-hmm. Um, these ones are very quite reminiscent of uh, uh, Train to Busan. Oh, right. Very but frantic. They're, yeah, they're very sort of you know, jerky and stuff like that. When they, they first become infected, they like all twisty arms and it's yeah. just quite sort of, oh, stop that. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. The old, the old, then your arms are not supposed to bend that way. No. Exactly. Yeah. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 yeah. stop, stop, yeah. stop, stop. That's just unnatural. Um, so yeah, again, a nice, a nice sort of, um, nothing too serious, mm. of course, uh, some quite, um, sort of, you know, oh, get moving, get moving, get moving, get moving. That sort of, um, mm. you know, that sort of franticness about it. Yeah. Real anxiety inducing moments. 
<laughs> in it. Yep. Like, you better be a fucking ass. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, another film I recommend. I, I was pretty lucky with all of this. They were actually all really mm. enjoyable films. Cool. And then mm. we come to the very last thing that I watched. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, as anyone who knows me will know, I'm a big fan of Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. Right? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. What I'm not a big fan of is Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds, The New Generation. <laughs> yeah, right. Not at all. Right? No? But this weekend, <clears throat> they streamed the musical, um, the stage musical, for free. Right? Mm. On um, YouTube. I think it was free yeah. for something like 48 hours. So I thought, right, I'll have a watch of that. I'll give it mm. a go. And it was War of the Worlds, The New Generation. But... Mm. Um, yeah, it's like it's a stage show, lots of stuff is going on, so fine, I'll get on with it. You know, I can, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just mm. deal with the music as we go yeah. on. Now, my my biggest bugbear, well, I'll get on to that in a moment. Yeah, everybody's yeah. performance in it was brilliant, yeah. absolutely fantastic. Jason Donovan <clears> was in it, he played the um, the uh, the preacher, uh-huh. you know, or the uh, the the priest, or whatever it was, he is in that. Um, and yeah, really convincing as a man whose world has just completely crumbled. Who feels a bit like, well, a bit like after he left Neighbours. Hey, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah, very good. Even uh, Ricky Thingy from the Kaiser Chiefs, mm. very good in this as well as the artillery man. Right. So everybody, all the ensemble piece. Right. Okay. Everybody's really good. And then, then we come to Liam Neeson. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh dear. I, 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 right, now, for me, I don't know why they mm-hmm. bothered changing, they, they bothered getting him in to do this. Why? I, I just don't know why they just didn't keep Richard Burton's sort of mm-hmm. set right. up with this and just change everything. Else. Fine, fuck with the music if you want to, but don't, don't swap out Liam Neeson for... Oh, I should have said Richard, yeah, Burton. Richard Burton for Liam Neeson. Mm. Uh, to, if I've got to describe the, dif- the difference between the performances, it, it's kind of like this, right? Because mm. Richard Burton really loved the English language. He loved speaking it. You could tell by the way he poured over certain words, right? Mm. And listening to his performance in War of the Worlds, there are certain words that I, I remember, right? Just words themselves, which mean a lot, mm. right? Just connect me to this musical. Things like indefatigable right indefatigable the, exactly the yeah. way he says it yeah right? yeah he puts real weight behind it you know and that's that was the thing with richard burton he could do that mm. so imagine if you will right imagine war of the worlds is a meal okay okay and it's a finely prepared meal right yeah okay the cook serves up two portions of it right mm. he gives one to richard burton and he gives one to Liam Neeson, who are both sitting at the same table, right? Yeah. Okay. Richard Burton takes a spoonful, for, for whatever, enjoys it, really, mm. really thinks about the flavours, enjoys the taste. Just mm. really, you know, he's making a, a meal out of it, right? He's making it really enjoyable. Yeah. Then you have Liam Neeson, who literally gets a <laughs> bottle of ketchup, smothers the fucking thing in ketchup, and then puts it all in his mouth with a fucking coal shovel. Right, because that's basically what it is. There's nothing about his performance that stands out apart from, you know, um, your your phone provider obviously made a lot because you are phoning this fucking well in, mate. But does he does he pause and look and go? I've got full blown AIDS. No, he doesn't do anything <laughs> like that at all. No. When it comes to things like indef- words like you know indefatigable, yeah, it's just part of a sentence. Yeah. You know, if I if I fucking will. So like you know yawned or something, I would have missed it. Mm. This is it. It's, there's no, there's no joy in that performance. There's no soul at all. It's just fucking dead. It's right. just flat, right? Mm. It's like trying to get. It's like getting in a bricky to paint the fucking Mona Lisa. It really is. It's just, it's rubbish. It's not like monkey Jesus. It monkey, is monkey Jesus. Monkey Jesus. <laughs> Fucking monkey Jesus. <laughs> it's monkey Jesus. Monkey, monkey Jesus. Bast, monkey bastard hands. Um, yeah. Wow. 
Yeah, if uh, well, there you go, right? So <laughs> if it's if, if we're talking about astronomical wise, okay, mm. everybody who performed in it, apart from Liam Neeson, mm. is a shiny planet rich with resources, okay? Mm, and yeah. then you've got in the middle between a lot of them is a big black fucking hole, which is Liam Neeson's performance sucking the fucking joy out of everything. Mm, right, right there. <laughs> so, so you're not impressed then? No, even Jason, <laughs> Jason, Kylie and Jason Donovan right. fucking acted rings around him. Right. Okay. <laughs> Come on now. Where would you... Uh, would you ever thought you'd say that? Uh, the, do you know what? It's 2020, mate. I, if if you would turn around to me and say tomorrow that Yui Bowl made an Oscar-winning film, I'd just be like, yeah, just throw it on the fucking pile. I want to see Darren with mm. uh, little uh, the drinks bottles from aeroplanes <laughs> in his knuckles against Liam Neeson. With little drinks bottles in his knuckles. Yeah, wolf puncher. The, yeah. Winner, yeah. the winner gets to keep their version of War of the Worlds. <laughs> you, you know what? I know Liam Neeson has a particular set of skills, but it's not acting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell oh, you that now. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, it's a shame because tonight we got as a guest. <laughs> 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 I don't know what you want. <laughs> a decent version of War of the Worlds? How about that, Liam? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Liam, Liam, are you on? Yeah. No, he's coming around my house now. <laughs> yeah, he's on his way. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, um, so, I'm so, done. I'm so done. you're done, I'm are done you? Now. That's I'm it. You, you, I said, you, I've spent. I'm spent. You're spent. I've, talked to, I've, spoke to, I've talked too much. You've spoke to your lot. I've spoke to me lot. Yeah, I've spoke to. <laughs> You spooked it. Sorry, I've waffled on. I really have. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, fine. I'm not going to... I'm going to sit in the corner now. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fruit corner. Yep. Right. Okay, then. Well, um, let's move on then. My week. I'll just skip over a few because I had a few things. Firstly, chili jam. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh... Let's start with that. Basically, I have a I I love really hot food, and I'm getting right into it. And I love spicy food. And since this lockdown, Lisa, who's at my youngest, she loves cooking and making sweets and cakes, and you know, just generally cooking. One thing she's found is that she can make this chili jam, which is like a sort of really sweet. Um, like a really sweet chutney, but it does f- when you put it in the fridge, it turns into basically a solid jam. Now, normally it has jalapenos in it, which is a hot chili, but not really that hot in the grand scheme of things. And I, I find that I basically this stuff once she makes it, I just like I just devour it. I just I, like a pound of cheese and this thing and a cracker, just it's gone. Anyway. I, we go around the shops this week, and I say around, and we're doing our daily, sh- uh, weekly shop. And I said, "Well, you know, if you want to make some more of that chili jam, why don't you move the up upper stage in the chilies? You know, maybe make it a bit spicier." <laughs> and so Lisa's sort of gone in there, and she's gone around to the chili aisle, and she's grabbed these other chilies, thinking that they were um, either habaneros or Scotch bonnets, which are, you know, s- starting to move up the scale, shall we say? So she gets them, and I'm like, oh, I can't wait for this. This is going to be great, you know. And the first thing you have to do with these things is you have to char grill them. Because you char grill the skin, the skin falls off, and you've got, like, the sweet meat underneath, which is super chilly. Anyway, she puts these things on the frying pan, yeah? No joking. It was like the house had filled with mustard gas. (laughs) I have never in my born days had one of those things where you literally... You can't understand why the air is choking you. And all of us, we're all going around coughing and spluttering. We've got the windows open. There's no smoke. There was no smoke. But it was literally this thing. Eyes are streaming, coughing, wheezing. It's just like it, anyone looking outside in, in the driveway as they walk past would have just looked like we just we turned into the COVID house overnight. It's just like, ah, oh, fucking hell, ah, sort of thing. Anyway, it turns out looking at the looking at the thing, that what we what Kate, Lisa had managed to pick up was um, chilies that were called apocalypse chilies. 
And what it turns out is Apocalypse Chilies are one underneath the Carolina Reaper. Or the California Reaper. I can't remember what everyone is. It's got Reaper in the title. It can't be that good. No, with, that's, the, that's the hottest chili you can get commercially. The Carolina Reaper. And it's the one that, you know, you have to hold, you know, you have to hold with sort of latex gloves because yeah. it will just burn you through the fucking skin of the chili. So what she's got is she's got one that's one step down. And it's literally when she's put it in the pan to, to jar it, essentially it's released more chili than I've ever had in my entire life into the atmosphere of the house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, we're, and we're all like, I can feel my gums. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, um, yeah, but she did actually, a uh, fair play to her. She, you know, after the air had cleared and we'd managed to, we'd managed to sort of, fumigate the house and every single window was open it was pissing down with rain outside there was water all over the floor because it's all coming through the windows and the doors and everything once that all cleared she went back in and she made the chili and she made the chili jam and knowing how hot this thing was now um she sort of doubled up on everything else anyway so i tried some the other day i tried some now normally i'm okay with chilies but do you know what I did? I I, I had a tiniest bit, uh, probably I would say probably not even a t- uh, not even a sugar spoon's worth, worth yeah. Mm-hmm. And I put this stuff on a big old length of cheese, like about a, about an inch long. And I put it in my mouth. And do you know what I what I did? You I put your ass in the fridge. I saw I saw through time. <laughs> I I literally had the 2001 Stargate moment. It as it I am I am fully aware of exactly my posi- of the position and location of all my internal organs. I know exactly how long my uh, my large colon is because I know exactly. I have felt that cheese and that chili do an entire internal MRI of my body. I think I think it was it was unlike anything I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> but that said, as is with all chilies, if you mm. have them too many times, you get used to them. So I now find I can have a, like a spoonful of it on 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 a cracker. Right. Which is bizarre, and I don't know if that means I'm doing myself some massive internal damage, or <laughs> probably. <laughs> what? But it's just like just was... because you can take it doesn't mean that's good. Well, no, I mean I must admit, you know, I haven't been able to poo for the last three days thanks to that. But it's just, <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, I, I find it's really tasty now. I'll, I'll I'll keep I'll send you a little jar if you like, Dal. Uh, I, I that's a big negatory for me. No, <laughs> oh, all right then, Jim. I'll be up for some of that. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll get some. I'll get some sent over. You might. You might have to watch. You might have to watch out in case the glass breaks. But we'll see what we can do. <laughs> <laughs> Elton, what about you? You want some? Uh, as much as I like hot stuff, mm-hmm. um, I'm all right. Honestly, yes. Yeah, okay. No, I'm. I'm good. Thank you very much. Oh, well, fair enough. Okay, then. Well, moving on. Um, the other thing that I did, moving on to media for a second, um, on Sunday, uh, which has nothing to do with my internal body recovery, thanks to ch- eating that, that chili jam, um, basically, uh, Carol and I sat down, sat down and just was like, the kids are upstairs. They're doing their own thing. What should we watch on telly? And we went through some, some Netflix uh, sort of recommended for you type things and watch stuff that we wouldn't normally watch. So the first one we watched was um, Onward, which is the Pixar one. The, oh, right. The um, Pixar movie with Tom Holland and um, Chris Pratt. Yeah. I quite liked it. It's, 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 it's quite funny insofar as basically what happened was is it's a world where, which is all Dungeons & Dragons kind of world. And it go and it gives you this big monologue about how magic is really hard to master and it really takes a lot of time and then you see all these wizards going around and sort of creating light in people's houses, you know, for money and all this sort of thing. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. And he goes, but then something happened. And then you cut to this other house and someone's going, I've got a switch. And they just flick it and there's a light bulb. And it's like, I call this the light bulb. And it's like, (laughs) as soon as that happened, everyone was like, oh, we don't need magic. And fairies were like, I've got cars. I don't need to fly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And all that kind of thing. And, you know, sort of like dragons don't need to sort of use flames when they got an oven, that sort of thing. And so the age of technology basically pushes all magic out the window. And essentially, it's about these two these two boys who who lost their dad um, in, in, due to sort of illness, and one of them, uh, the younger one who's never met him, uh, finds a spell and a staff from their dad to bring him back for one day to see how they've turned out. Um, so so typical Pixar sort of last 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 minute sort of like sniffles no i'm not crying you're you're crying shut up (laughs) it's dusty in here shut up um (laughs) lots of that um but but the thing is they do the magic and as they do the magic to bring their dad back at the beginning of the film essentially the spell goes wrong and they only bring back the the bottom half of him (laughs) sorry i've seen the beginning of this film yes so he's so he's basically dad's just a pair of legs with a glowing top, so he can't hear, he can't see, and they're sort of dragging him around on an extendable dog lead as they yeah. try to go and find the rest, the remain, the, the spell to fix him, and they've got twenty four hours to do it before he vanishes forever. And yeah, bit, it's not prime Pixar. I mean, there's, but it, but it does the job. And on the Sunday afternoon, just sitting there, going, I still can feel my my internal. I can still feel my duodenum. It was great. It was great thing to just sit there and watch. The other thing we ended up watching was a romantic comedy, which is a very odd thing for me. At the you know, sort of, just sort of like, oh, sit down, let's have a watch of a romantic comedy. But um, we watched uh, one called Crazy Rich Asians. Ah, oh, right. I've heard a lot about this, which is not bad actually. Which again is a, it's it's pretty generic as it goes. You know, a, a lady is going out with a guy. He's really cool. She really into him, and then he says, "Come and meet my family." Flies them to Singapore. Uh, flies her to Singapore, where she finds out that this this family basically owns the whole of the island, and they are the richest people ever. And then it becomes a sort of like. Mum, the uh, the, uh, was it girlfriend versus snidey family, you know, with the the boyfriend sort of stuck in the middle, and um, yeah, yeah, it it had some nice moments. It was quite nice. It chomped along quite quickly. It wasn't, it wasn't like I say, prime prime comedy, but it was it was again, it was a nice Sunday afternoon. Just sit there, to switch your brain off, just watch it, carry on eating crackers and going, oh my ass is going to explode. Um and uh, yeah yeah if, I I'd recommend it if you just if you just want to sort of just a just a un you know un an untrying watch it's it was good yeah it was just fine it was fine and that was on Amazon Prime uh, oh. onward by the way onward by the way was on um, Disney Disney Plus yes and I've got to say now this is the second time with Disney Plus I've only used it twice mm-hmm. but this is the second time with Disney Plus. Where they have this thing where you remember when in the old days when Netflix and um, Amazon were still trying to get their streaming right, yeah. And you know if the if the speed fell off, the what would happen? <laughs> what would happen? Uh, the lip sync would go out. Yeah, but what would happen to the screen? It would all go a bit pixelated, wouldn't it? It drop resolution. Mm, yeah. Well, with Disney Plus, what happens is the resolution stays pin sharp, crikey vision. The audio stays perfectly right, but the frame rate drops down to 10 frames a second. And it happens every time there's a full screen of action. Now, I've got fast, I've got fast internet here. I'm not going to lie. I've got, I've got fiber fucking optics sitting in my house. And there was a few scenes in, in Onward. And there also, when I watched Star Wars A New Hope, and... Every time there's a full screen of action, it drops down to 12 frames a second. And it was like, what's the fucking point? And you've got these fantastically animated sequences and cars and dragons and manticores and fucking fireworks going off and fairies and all this sort of thing. And you're sort of like, and, and you're literally watching it like a PowerPoint slideshow. 
<laughs> and, it's and, just... and then Boris Johnson pops up and goes, "Next slide, please." Yes, and next, next slide, next slide. Latin, next Latin, slide, Latin. Latin. Well, Latin. Uh, oh, I was incredibly drunk at the time. Yeah, oh. so, uh, yeah. Piccinini, Piccinini. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. Blah blah. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Anyway, <laughs> yes. Moving on to to that though. Um, yes, we we are still doing our um, our bit for the uh, COVID vaccine manoeuvre, uh, being one of our being one of the random test groups for um, for COVID testing. You know, for the Office of National T- Statistics and Oxford University. That's our good f- because all, all the data that they've uh, recovered from all of these people would surely be helping the situation, wouldn't it? Yeah. You would think so, wouldn't you? Wouldn't yeah, you sure think? It'd be fucking bang on accurate, wouldn't it? Except for the fact. Well, firstly, a little update: we got we got letters through today saying that my test and our family's tests um, for COVID um, from the eleventh, uh, from the eleventh, right? Now yeah. it is the twenty seventh as we record, but okay. from the eleventh, Sunday the eleventh, we didn't have COVID. So oh, that's nice to know. So it's that's nice. That's, that's fucking really weeks. fucking useful, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Mm. So we found mm. that out. We found that out today, um, and it's the twenty seventh. Cool. So that's good. So that's the first thing. Second thing, we normally when these people turn up, what happens is they're just random local people who are volunteers. They're supposed to turn up. They've got a big bunch of bags with all the testing kit in. They give you a little testing kit. You do your swabs. You put the testing kit all back together again, and you hand it back. Anyway, last week, the lady who said she was coming to sort of do all our tests um, basically didn't turn up on the Saturday when she was supposed to. Then what happened was she turned up on she turned up on the Friday uh, the following week and did the tests during the day of just myself, Carol and Katie, my oldest. Mm-hmm. She, what she didn't do was she didn't do the test for Lisa, my youngest. Anyway. She was supposed to come back on the Saturday. Didn't. And then, this Saturday, out of the blue, some guy just phones up and just says, I, I'm coming to do a test. And it's like, what? I thought we'd done the test. No, coming to do a test. He turns up. He thinks he's only doing the test for Lisa. So it's like, okay, that's fine. Just Lisa. And he's like, how many people in the house? And I'm like, Four and he's like, "Well, I got I I can give you four tests." So it's like, "What?" So he comes out, he tests me again. Now, bearing in mind we got tested on the Friday, but he tests mm-hmm. us. Then he tests Katie. Then he tests Carol. But then what happens is he gets out two tests for Lisa, one for the test that was missed last week, and one for the test that's this week. So. So basically, we all got tested twice, and then Lisa got tested twice, and on the second test, he said he would put that in for last week. <laughs> uh, fucking hell. What is the fucking point? So there you go. So so our next week, our next results, presumably for this week, in in a fortnight's time, will turn up and tell us that we had the same thing that we had the week before because they're all going to get roped in with the week before's results mm-hmm. and Lisa's got two tests both happened on the same day but one apparently is going to be for the week before why don't you save them a bit of time and do the next four weeks yeah, now yeah, time. Do that. Mm, uh, well maybe maybe and it's just like I just and even even Lisa I mean she's you know she's young but she, even she went what's the point of this you know what is the point of this it's going to yeah. tell you nothing mm-hmm it's, and she's right. It's going to tell you nothing. It's just a, it's the most useless fucking test in the world. It's like I'm going to say I'm going to say a number now, and you have to guess what number I was going to say just a minute ago. I'm going to say it now. Five. What number was I thinking about just a second ago? Oh, that's it's like, a hard one. Exactly, and it's the same thing. It's it's exactly the result like that. It's just like, what is the point if you know the answer? Five. Uh, there, good man, good man. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point if you know the fucking answer to do a test again? It's like, I don't know. It's just fucking stupid. So um, yeah, that's that's going well. 
So, uh, <laughs> uh, what else I got to tell you? Oh, I've got an art. I got an art commission. I've got a painting to do for someone Ooh. for monies, which is for good. Monies, yeah, for monies. Someone is going to pay me to do a scene from Twenty Eight Days Later, which they apparently can't find anywhere as a poster. Oh, um, stick so, your camera out the window in a month's time, you'll get it then. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say at the moment. Yeah. What, yeah. What's the scene that you're it's, about to say? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a scene of um, when Killian Murphy's in the church near the beginning and he's going up the stairs, oh, okay. yeah. and on the wall is the is the words, repent because the end is pretty fucking nigh. Mm. And, and the lady wants it like a big sort of like two-meter canvas. Um, wow. And and all the pictures that are available of it are like really low res, like eight hundred by eight hundred images, tiny pixel images. So she said, you know, could you make it, paint it in your photo real style, and, and make me a big sort of two meter canvas of this thing? So uh, yeah, so that's that's going to be happening for the next couple of weeks. Excellent. Yeah, um, and that's about it, really. Um, yeah, we had some holiday shenanigans, but that's not really uh, interesting at the moment. And, uh, yeah, we're off next week. Hey! So that's going to be great. Going to go and sit in someone else's house and just sit there and stare at the walls. Hey! hey but it's not here. Anyway, so um, before we get on to reviewing next week's film, or this week's film, sorry, we did have some feedback um, about last week's film, which was Splinter, um, mainly surrounding the um, sur- surrounding understanding some of our references, like Sooty and Sweep. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't. Yeah, what Hun- have we done? no. Well, Hunter Langley wanted to know. He said the movie was neat, but I felt I got more. I feel like I got more out of Googling niche seventies and eighties TV references that you guys made last week. So yeah, so we um so I've I've now started a thing on Facebook as a consequence called What the Fuck Are They Talking About? Where basically every time I drop we drop a reference, which I think probably no one under the age of thirty is gonna get, I'm gonna have to put a <laughs> post up on the Facebook group. <laughs> Saying, saying, look, you know when we said Bernie Clifton, this is who we're talking about, you know, th- which is this week's. What the fuck are they talking about? So, um, yeah, so I'll be doing that. So that's that's come from that thing with with Hunter, um, and then on top of that, Martin Thompson and John Campion uh, and some cock end called Darren Barnard. I don't, I don't know who the fuck he is. Um, we're talking about um, talking about the new measurement for horror films. It yes. seems it seems Elton. That your potato scale isn't quite good enough anymore. Oh, fine. Well, you yeah. see, because... Oh, apparently... fine. No, fine. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. because Martin said, do we need to have a new horror scale now, which is if it's that bad that Lee needs to get up and make a cup of tea? Mm-hmm. Because, um, Darren, I don't know if you, you heard the cast, but there was a, there's a... Did you see the film last week? Yes, I did. I actually watched it in thinking, oh, right, okay, we're going to get on and have a chat about this one. Mm. Well, you know you know the scene with, um, shall we say, um, where where one of the characters becomes um, fairly armless? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. well, that bit was just like, I just had to go, no, thank you. I'm just going to pause <laughs> that for a second. I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea, have a little walk around, stare at the sky, make yourself a nice, <laughs> get myself a nice biscuit, sit down. And and go. <laughs> so, so, so my little uh, tagline was was right then. When yeah. the going gets tough, it, um, it's not only the tea that leaves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 nice. You you've got no legs to stand on when you start moaning about my j- dad jokes. Now you know that. Yeah, I know. I know. What so, Tetley timeout. Tetley terror tet- timeout. The, the Tetley terror timeout. <laughs> yes. So um, yeah, so the, so there was that. But now John Campion stepped in. And he said, so, so far, we have measured scariness by, uh, the firstly, the number of potatoes or roast dinner items dislodged by Elton's reactions to jump scares <laughs> or periods of prolonged unease. <laughs> Two, the distance between Elton and his phone in fi- as the fi- film streams. Yep. Yep, exactly. And now, how many times a film must be paused so Lee can partake of a calming brew? The big question is whether these scales could be equivalent or operate independently of each other. E.g., how far away is Elton's phone when two potatoes are dislodged, and how close is Lee to need another cup of tea when this happens? <laughs> are these correlations consistent? So, 
Yeah, I think I think once we get well, we might be able to figure it out this this week as we review um, Devil, aka five knobs in a lift we can and, draw a venn diagram or we can draw a venn diagram if if you're really scared elton let me mm-hmm. know and i can work out how much how close i was to getting a cup of tea in this film okay yeah um but i think i think there's i think there is a scale that needs to be drawn up someone who's, who's good at statistics and maths needs to work this out one one potato is the equivalent of considering filling up the kettle yep Two yeah. potatoes. Two potatoes is reaching for the remote, and four potatoes is a full-blown cup of tea plus extra stirring to make it dark. Oh, but what happens if you have to bring out the hobnobs as well? Well, at that point, I think um, Elton's now moved up to the um, st- reaching for the phone and cleaning gravy off his lap. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. We'll yes. see. We'll see where the scale scale lies. Yes, I I am in uh, my house. And the phone is in Great Yarmouth, so <laughs> there's a distance for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say my my cup of tea, desi- my desire for a cup of tea from this film coming up is is somewhere close to not anywhere at all ever. I know. I'm sorry. That's okay. I I mean nothing by it for everything I'm about to say, Elton. I can. That's all I can say. That's all I can it's say. Fine. <laughs> anyway, which leads us neatly on to um, let's do this thing. Let's review Devil. Oh, it's the naughty ladies. Look at them dancing. Ah, they're, they're in the fire. They're in the fire, spinning around. Amazing silhouettes. Oh, look at them go. Got that Joanna Lumley haircut thingy going on. <laughs> Please keep it down. Nice, nice. Oh, I like that authoritarian there, Elton. Very I love good. It when he's he's all kind of you know aggressive mm. like that. Yeah, oh. and never have to do it again. Thank no, goodness. No, I was going to say at this time of night, you probably your family's quite glad about that. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, well, um, then we are on to five twats in a lift. Shamalama ding dongs, five twats in a lift. I mean, sorry, sorry, I mean devil. Devil is also known as Night Chronicles 1 Devil, uh, because mistakenly he thought there'd be more. Um, it's a 2010 American supernatural horror film directed by John Eric Dowdle. Um, uh, with the screenplay by Brian Nelson and from a story by M. Night Shamalama Lama Lama Shabby Shabba. Um, and the film stars Chris Messina, Logan Marshall Green, Jeffrey Arend, Bo- Bojana no- Nova jo- Nova Novakovic, sorry, Jenny O'Hara, and <laughs> Bokeem Woodbine. <laughs> Do you know, it's harder to say the fucking the characters' names because I can't even remember who they are in the film. Um, anyway, the film uh, the film was released on September the seventeenth, two thousand and ten. Um, but anyway, I won't say what the the critics praised or had a go at it for. But uh, it's in there, right in the header. Um, the budget was ten million quid because, frankly, how much does it cost to hire a lift? And was that Elton's fee? Yeah, yeah. get them out, get them out of the lift. <laughs> how much? How much do you think he made at the box office, Darren? Oh, I don't know. Um, four bodies and a supernatural entity. Okay, Jim. Four stuck buttons. <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> uh, Elton. I'm going to go really boring. Three million quid. Okay. Well, actually, it won one. It, it got one lift in service mode. No, actually, it got sixty-two point six million quid. Oh, which is a lot more than I would have paid for it. But there you go. That demands sequels, though. It do- well, yeah. you'd say that, wouldn't you? Well, if it's made triple. Triple is my is made like six times the amount. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, once it goes over triple, it definitely needs a sequel, doesn't it? What yeah, about merchandise like action figures and stuff like that. How much did that mm. make back? Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the <laughs> the the devil lift playset, and now from Mattel, a lift shaft. 
<laughs> yeah, reenact your favorite moments from Devil in this box in a lift. <laughs> Hang your old ladies in the corner. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, Devil was intended to have um, a sequel um, and be the first part of a Night Chronicles trilogy. Um, which involved supernatural within the urban modern society. In June 2010, Shamalama Shoggy announced that the second film was called Twelve Strangers and was later rechanged to Reincarnate. The film was about a jury discussing a case dealing with the supernatural, um, and the same team was going to write and direct. Uh, Shamal- Shamalama also um, confirmed that the story he were currently uh, for a third installment was going to be taken and then eventually became the abandoned sequel the taken from the abandoned sequel to Unbreakable and then was produced into the idea for Split so Split and um, what was the other one uh, Glass yep. so um, yeah which you know, make of that what you will um Right, so okay then. Right, top top line reviews round the table. What did we all think? I mean, I've never seen this before, Darren. I know you have. Mm. Um, Elton, you clearly have. Yep. And Jim, you have as well, haven't you? Uh, I'd not seen it before. You'd no. not seen it before, right? Okay. Mm. Well, in which case, I will go to you. Um, what did you think about it? Just off, the, just generally. Um, it kind of had the feel of. Um, sort of modern day, a darker modern day sort of Twilight Zone. Mm-hmm. It's fairly short, an hour and twenty. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was kind of glad they didn't push it to ninety minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's one of the. I mean, I kind of quite enjoyed it, but at the same time, it was kind of this could have come to be done in an hour mm. and been a bit tightened up. Mm. But um, uh, it was in it was interesting points to it, shall we say? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay, um, and Darren, what about you? Um, well, I think back to when I saw it last. I actually felt a little bit better about this than I did the first time I saw it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe I was paying attention more this time. I don't know, mm-hmm. but um. Yeah, I, I think I agree with Jim, you know, it's the, I, I'm glad they didn't push it any further, mm-hmm. and they just sat at, you know, hour and 20, rather than, you know, stringing it out for another 10 minutes or so. <laughs> okay, cool. Elton? I, I kind of agree with my learned friends. Mm-hmm. It sat quite well at an hour and 20. Mm-hmm. Uh, any further, and then you'd be just... Flogging the dead horse, really. Um, it could have been cut down to an hour, or maybe forty-five minutes with adverts. I don't know. <laughs> yep. It's it. It hasn't got the horror weight to it. Mm. It's it's very very PG thirteen. Mm. And I apologise for that, for putting it on as my movie, because it's not... Yeah, it. Mm, I should have done better. Should have done better. Dude, dude, it's fine. We yeah. we all pick these films. We don't always know what we're going to get, and that's yeah. fine. That's cool. But um, I, I, I think I'm... I, I came out of there, out of the cinema watching it, going, uh, did I enjoy that or did I not? I'm glad I've seen it again to reaffirm. I've still come out going, oh, I don't know if I enjoyed that or not. Oh, mm. and I'm I'm probably never going to revisit this one again. This was a a, a kind of a flop. Mm. I, on the other hand, thought it was complete and utter bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> I was bored of this fucking thing from the start to the finish, and. The more I thought about it, the more angry I became at how dumb some of the writing was. I mean, literally, just wow. Five yeah. minutes of thought, and you just go, "What the point? What is the point of this? What is the point of this?" Which will lead to some of the questions that I will be asking, because if I was just left to reel off the extensive list I have here, 
Oh God, then he's got paper. I do have paper. I do have a piece. Made notes. I have made notes. I we have haven't made seen this piece of paper. No, no. We could do a shitty superhero, and it'd be a lot more entertaining than what I'm about to read out. But do you know what? Let's 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 just go. Let's just go f- go through the do, through some questions and see how everyone else feels about these things. So, Jim. I'm going to start by asking you a question. You know, you are the learned man of the macabre. You uh, know (laughs) the things of the weird and the wonderful. And can I ask, just straight off the bat, when has there ever been a test for the devil by dropping a slice of toast? (laughs) That's a test for Murphy's Law, I believe. (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) Because... It is. Murphy's Law says anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So every and time if you drop a slice of toast, it'll end butter or jam side down. That's but but other than that, I can't connect it to the devil. So you know, because there because there you are in the Vatican. <laughs> your your team team exorcist are all sitting there going right. We've tried the holy water. We've tried the divine rites. We've tried a few. We've tried a few incantations. We've even tried some sort of salting of the earth. I'll tell you what. Has anyone tried dropping a piece of toast? <laughs> fuck! <laughs> Holy fuck! The toast has dropped the butter side down. Oh shit! Have we dropped a cat? Let's try. Let's try the cat to double check. If it lands on its back, we're fucked. Oh, seriously, <laughs> fucking toast! <laughs> <laughs> fucking toast! <laughs> Did, did nobody else see that scene and just think, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> I, I thought to myself, you know, when I saw that, and it, I think the th- it landed, uh, was it? Um, Jam side, side down. down didn't Jam it? side like, down. Well, that's how they all land, because it's physics, and it's like weight turning the thing up. So, so th- that's proved nothing. No, especially you know, the I way... just got di- I got distracted because me and Patrice were going, it's jam, not jelly, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of thought... by. <laughs> I thought it was just a waste of a piece of toast. Yeah. Can we? Yeah. Can we? Could you just fix that, America? <laughs> well, we, yeah. we, you know, just sort that shit out. It's not yeah. jelly. Jelly, something different. For fuck's sake! I, um, oh, I mean, <laughs> seriously. I mean, and then the thing is, when you see how he drops it as well, he literally has it flop over. You know, like how someone fiddles the fucking flip of a coin by having the head side up and all that kind of crap. It was exactly that. It was like, if I if I drop the toast, it is the devil. It's like, oh fuck off. Seriously, dude. And then they leave you that. Then they leave that silly fuck on his own with a fucking microphone into the into an already panicking group of people. Yeah, just what you need. I know. Keep them calm. Spiritual sanctum into the. It's like through the fucking microphone. Get out of it, you prat. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, we think the devil might be in the lift with you. Um, uh, Has days, anyone got any king's meal? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're gonna get through a lot of fucking toast going through the floors on this one. Is it? Is a? Is the toast falling yet? No, no, no. It hasn't. Has it popped out of the toaster yet? No, no. Get all the toasters. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ghostbusters rocking up with a fucking Breville sandwich toaster to double check the area. <laughs> Fuck me. Anyway, go on, right. So, um let's let's start with this. How do you feel like the um the, the cops the cop story resolved or or basically played out? Mr Mr Co- Captain Coincidence. How how do you feel that went? It was was that all right? Was that was that something you were expecting when you found out the truth? Anyone? I really didn't concentrate on <laughs> his story that, and it's like, oh, I get it now. Mm. Yeah, that's why they he's there because was it why he was there though? Was that yeah, part that's of the it. devil that's, that's thing? The re- that was the reason why he was there. He got drawn in by this person committing suicide. And I've got to say, right, because I think the actual body landed about four or five streets away. Because <laughs> um, that's where he was. He was like, he had to take a car <coughs> to get to where the person jumped out of a Now, I know there's strong winds, right, mm. up that high, but mm. surely not that strong. Well, they did say that the truck had moved and there was evidence Yeah, I thought the of truck that. had r- 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 sort of... It rolled down the hill, hit that barrier, then gone down a side street. Was yeah. my impression of it. And, and no, and nobody. Kind of, <laughs> no, I did wonder. Didn't anyone see that happen? <laughs> Mind you, the shit I see white vans doing, I do just tune it out. I'll be honest. 
<laughs> yeah. he said, he because said, he's a... better for my blood pressure that way. Oh, yeah. he's a white van dicking about. Oh, fair enough. We'll fuck him. Yeah. What, not, what are you going to do? Not often with a bloke's <laughs> hand hanging off the fucking side, dripping blood everywhere. Just, just holding rosary beads. Uh, just, oh. Well, yeah. some <laughs> things I've seen out of the back of bike vans. That's the same. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah Unsecured true. sofas, kids sat on the sofas. Mm. You know, I just tune all this shit out. It's a van, fuck it. Mm. It's like... down. <laughs> it's a van it's looking dodgy. Let's take another route, fuck him. Yeah. It's like it's like top gear, isn't it? You know, the the lorry driver thing, you know, you, you, you there you are driving along, driving along, dead hooker, driving along, driving along, dead hooker. <laughs> Get used to it after a while. Um I mean, no, but I mean, seriously, that whole thing with the truck, I mean, that was when that was when my eyes were already rolling in my head like pinball machine. I mean, it's mm-hmm. like, did did nobody, did, exactly as Jim said, did nobody see that truck with a dead body on it after it had fallen out of the building? Let's be honest. And that building was surrounded by people. Um, did nobody notice that truck rolling off? I mean, that's got to roll quite a way on its own. Well, I I have thoughts on the whole film, which kind of lead to that. Okay, well, okay, hit me with it. But no, I, I don't want to do that just yet. Maybe just in case someone else comes along and says it, so I'll just leave it because it, it's an obvious thing to say. But okay. yeah, the 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 trucks rolled. No one's, no one else has been hit by glass. No, nope. he's been reported. Uh, because someone's fallen out of a window, but we we have no witnesses to that at all. Even the the dude cleaning up, he, he didn't hear that. We we have no <laughs> witnesses of the truck moving. We have no witnesses of the truck crashing. Nobody no. puts fucking handbrakes on anything either. No. What, what what is the matter with you? No. Put your handbrake on, and, you and, idiot. And the gen- and the janitor standing at the window going, "I've got to clear up a window that's broken." It's like. Why do you think it might be broken? Do you not want to look out the window, see if there's yeah. someone like I don't know, someone fell? And he <laughs> didn't even put a little cone out either. I was you say, know, the health and safety uh, procedures there are not being followed at all. I, I'm oh. sorry, sir. Where is your little cone? <laughs> where's, yeah, where's your little yellow stand that says caution wet floor? <laughs> Well, that wouldn't be good in a glass situation, would it? No, but it would be in that place with the fucking electric wire down on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been brilliant if he'd gone down to the basement, picked it up from there. <laughs> and that's the reason why the other guy got electrocuted, because there wasn't a sign there. Do you know what? He had some real casualty moments in this, didn't it? You know, it's like, uh, oh, look, he's here's, here's Bill. He's, he's just been for a bit of a drink. And uh, yeah. now he's sliding into work on his skateboard. And he happens to work in a plate glass uh, window <laughs> factory. Oh, oh no. what's going to happen so here, it, I wonder? Was it, it was like, was that Michael Burke show? 999. Michael oh, Burke. Yes. Like Michael Burke. This just in your face. Yeah. <laughs> It was a nice day for a climb. Those mm. pylons looked inviting. Who could have wondered what could have gone wrong? Mm. Well, I'm a feeling you're going to tell me in great detail. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, he this had. Is Bill. Mm. Yeah. He was out juggling saws, <laughs> chainsaws, <laughs> just minding his own business. <laughs> when all of a sudden, yeah. disaster struck. <laughs> It's like, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little Billy, aged eight, found his father's jaws of death. Who was to know what was coming next? Do you know where your jaws of death are? Check your garage now. Billy didn't think they were jaws of death. He thought they looked like a novelty hat. <laughs> yeah. And so that's what mm. Billy did. He wore it like a hat. Mm. Yeah. Little Susie had a, had a head strimmer. She thought she would take her dollies for a head strim. Little did she know, she wasn't supposed to do it in the pond. Um, I mean, anyway. <laughs> Moving on, I mean, okay, okay, okay. The, the, the thing in the lift, let's just go through the, the, the story itself. I mean, how do you feel it played out? Do you think that was, that was the right way to do it, to, to basically kill everyone off like that or did you feel like that whole building the mystery of who could it be was was that was that actually was that as i suspect pointless or was it actually 
Was it actually throwing you, oh, well, actually, it might be him. He didn't have the tools. It, oh, it might be her. She's the pickpocket. Did anyone actually suspect anyone in the lift, is what I'm saying? Well, I suspected the old woman because, well, I'd seen it before. So, uh, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I could, see, I could see it coming a mile off, mate. I'm sorry, I really could. <laughs> well, I, I like what they did up until the point when uh, the devil went, I've, I've, uh, looking forward to getting you. And he went, oh, no, I'll, I give myself up. He's like, oh, shit. Okay, <laughs> then. Bollocks. Well, I better fuck off then, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was so looking forward to getting you. Unfortunately, you found a loophole in my, in my, in my plans. I could have just tortured you and taken you before you had a chance to do that. But no, I've got to do oh. some exposition. <laughs> Yes, you and that bloke from Georgia with the fiddle, him as well. God blimey. Hmm. I mean, is there is there is there a history of that sort of thing, Jim, of the devil giving you the option to get out of it before he pulls you down for, for various films? Because I've every film I've ever seen with the devil in it, he's been a little bit unforgiving. <laughs> well, if you if you look at actually stories about deals with the devil, um I'd say more than half the time he does get bested. Hmm. Uh, because it is kind of thing he has to obey certain rules and mm. people who are clever uh, can uh, make a monkey out of him. Uh, mm. So it's, it's kind of 50-50 on, on the law, but it's kind of the, the, generally the stories where the devil is bested of, um, aren't the scary ones. Yeah. <laughs> you can see <laughs> what I mean. Yeah, which brings me to another question. Was anyone scared about in this film at all or tense in any way, shape or form? No. Well, I, I was intrigued. I did think with the... I was I was quite surprised when they started killing the people off because I thought, oh, you're going to play out which one's the devil. And then mm. you start bumping them off, narrowing the field. Mm. And it had sort of wrung foot in me because I was thinking the uh, the jumper. I thought, all right... The jumper is actually, it'll be, my guess, or the jumper will turn out to be one of the people in the lift and the devils mm. actually took their form. Mm. And so that kind of did send me up on a wild lift chase. Mm. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> As it were. I mean, I, yeah, go on, sorry. Well, as, as I said, though, I think that this sort of, this sort of story, it, it would work, it'd work far better at 50 minutes. Mm. And... It's, I've got a point of kind of, all oh, right, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even going to try and guess because you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I mean that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was going to say normally, um, normally it lost sort of focus of the mystery after a while. Cause you're, yeah, yeah, one of the devil. Come on, who is it? Tell yeah, me. I like yeah. that idea of having the person who jumped be one of the people in the. Li- that's a much better ending. Yeah, well, that's it. That's that's where I thought it was going to go. It's kind of like, oh, oh. He, they can't be in the lift because they're jam on top of an ambulance. Mm. <laughs> or a white van, rather. He's, Sorry, not he's just got toast strapped to his back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how he saved himself. <laughs> yeah, he put, the to- he put the jam around the other side. Yeah. You, you could actually make a perpetual motion engine with um, a slice of buttered toast and a cat. You strap the toast to the back of the cat and just yeah. drop them. And if yeah. you can harness that spinning... Yeah. It's perpetual energy, my friend. That's exactly. that's the way to do it. And what would that sound like? I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there, you, there you go. See, nobody, nobody comes to this fil- this this podcast for reviews. They come to it for perfect foley work. Yeah. That's what I say. <laughs> so come, yeah. come for the review. Stay for the foley work. Um, I, I quite like the story in the lift between the the the, the five people in there. Yes. it was five. Yeah, mm. I didn't mind it. I, you kind of knew that they all had like a little backstory and stuff like that, and. Um, little tricks up their sleeves etc and it, it it when i first watched it it did keep me guessing it, it kind of pushing you towards the lady uh, or, 
or someone else apart from the old old lady and because she's kind of killed off pretty sharpish mm. and in quite a horrific way as well um when you're in the the, the cinema as well when it all goes black and mm. dark and all you can hear that that was quite effective i'll give it that yeah, I was going to say, does, did that work particularly well for anyone in, in, in your house while you're sitting there watching with the lights on, just looking at a black screen, just hearing, ooh, ah, ooh, my foot, ah, mm. oh, my, get off me, ah, oh, don't touch me there, ooh, bad yeah. touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it, yeah. it didn't work for me this time around, but in the cinema, yeah, that was that was quite effective, I thought, <laughs> because you heard, like, the little growls and the little, there, there was a beast Mm. lurking around there mm. i quite like that yeah because i never got that sense so i mean i was watching it i was watching it on amazon prime with my headphones on and i thought i'd get something out of it but all i just heard was just this sort of usual sort of boom 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 <laughs> ah, oh mm. no oh no oh, oh my shoe oh i'm halfway down there oh brother numsy <laughs> you know it was just there was just weird noises and i was just like just show me, fuck's mm. sake. Just show me. I mean... Uh, <sighs> I mean... <laughs> I know you're struggling I'm, now. I'm yeah. really struggling. I'm really struggling because I, I just want to go off on one and that won't be a discussion. That will just be me for 40 minutes. But, um, I mean, okay, okay. Elton, can I ask yeah. a question then? Yes. Here we go. Here we go. Is this lift related? This is lift related. Excellent. Which, Here we would, go. Would you rappel down... A lift, like lift shaft, like that. Fuck that noise! Mm. Not a chance. I've never seen anyone do that whatsoever. Now, I'm not saying that this situation doesn't happen because this is the states compared to you know, the boring council stuff I've been on and the the low rise stuff. I've I've never. I don't think I've ever done done anything over thirty floors. Possibly not. Mm-hmm. So I haven't done like the the big massive ultra fast stuff that whips mm. up shafts at, at crazy speeds mm. um but you know th- this is supposed to be like a high-rise building i've never seen like a you walk into a room and just lift up a hatch and you can just look down f- 40 floors fuck that <laughs> there's no way i'm doing that whatsoever <laughs> right and okay. then go out on a, a, a little little thing tied around your waist Fucking mm. hell, he's, he's Lassie barking at the top saying, no, don't go down this well. <laughs> I don't know. But no, there, there's no way I would do that. They, that's crazy talk. And I don't think anyone would be allowed to do that either. Well, so I have seen it. I'm sure I've seen it in films before, but that doesn't mean it, it's actually kosher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, in Star Trek mm. V, they go up in a rocket boots and <laughs> tied mm. to the fence. But yeah. um, Oh, okay. I'm going to point out some major flaws in this Go on. so yeah. so that that floor one floor two <laughs> floor three <laughs> floor four. um that uh the lift falling down again and sparks flying all over the place fuck no never happens doesn't happen whatsoever don't be silly that right. doesn't happen <laughs> right um what else was there uh them going up into the motor room and uh, flicking switches and, oh, is that working? No, is that working? Yeah, that is me every day. Don't worry about that. That work, that is that is mm-hmm. kosher. Okay. But then having the power all the way down the bottom in the pit? Mm-hmm. No, that's not going to happen. So that's a load of bullshit. Um, the fireman, when they rocked up and tried to open the door, he didn't mm-hmm. even put his key in that door. He walked up and went, no, no, that doesn't open. And normally, mm. at that Can point, it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'd get the jaws of life and go, right, right, lads, here we go. Who hasn't mm. had a go yet? Okay, right, Steve, yeah, you, your, your turn to fuck these doors up royally. <laughs> and that's what they do. They love it. They love to smash the shit out of these things. Yeah, five pounds of tin versus a fucking burly fireman with a 20-pound mallet. Yeah, yeah. Y- you've yeah. got no chance. Yeah, nice. So, so you would say, so on 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 balance, it was a fairly inaccurate lift oh, movie. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, has he lost? Have we lost Elton? Oh no, he's gone. Oh dear. Well, we'll wait for him to come back. He's he's he said his piece. He's left. Well, the devil's got him. Maybe devil. Devil's got him. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, well, it's, it's, what's that? I can I can hear Lassie barking actually. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. What's that, Lassie? What's that? You're you're laughing at the stupid cunt at the bottom of the lift shaft because <laughs> he thought he could have so down it. Okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty hilarious as well. It's all right, Elton. Are you back? Are you I back? am back. Yes, yeah, I don't know what go. happened there. Maybe yeah. the devil heard me uh, well, bad mouthing lift. We did think that. We just said that lift. You know, devil got you. Can I ask a question as well? Also mm-hmm. about about the engineer bloke who was flipping around the house or flipping around the buildings. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. How many, how many, um, for a building that big, how many engineers and service people do you think you would have? Because I don't think it's just one, is it? Well, it depends how cheap the management is, really. Well, it, well, it, was it depends about, on how cheap the management <laughs> is or how cheap the, the lift company is as well. Because if you've got like 12 lifts in that, you, you ain't going to have a static guy on site. You've got no chance. No. They're, but, they're lucky to have a guy there. A building I worked in was slowly being plunged into darkness over a series of months because no, no one department would agree to hire a handyman to change the fucking light bulb. <laughs> 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 and all nice. the departments just passing the bell. I go, it's not our responsibility. Oh, nice. <laughs> and then it's kind of like, I, I left that job, but I... I I imagine in like three months' time, they're all sat there with like in complete darkness because no one has fucking signed each other's memos and signed off on a getting a fucking handyman to change a bulb. <laughs> oh, well. And that was a major multinational corporation. Yay. Mm. Okay. Who well, now that... trades under the name of um, two letters, fifth letter mm. of the alphabet twice. Cunts. That's what I tell you about. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Absolute fucking rock bottom. Cunts. Oh, <laughs> we're going to get sued. We're going to get sued. Bring we it did on, mention baby. a company I've got the name. on those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Still got the documents. Watch it. Nice. <laughs> um, okay, a, a quick, a quick question in about the um, about the uh, what was going to say about the um, about the the way they were bumping everyone off. Yeah. Mm. I. If you're the cop and all those guys up there watching with the with the the, the lift, you know, watching with the old uh, was it with the old camera, mm-hmm. yeah. Why is it that they think that one of those people in there is a murderer when, in literally the time it takes to switch a light off and then switch the light on, old lady goes from standing in a corner to literally hanging, hanging from a cable. That that requires two men to carry her down. Um, and and it's I, easiest. I, it's like you know, you, oh, you, they're not uh, believing in supernatural stuff. Well, I was just going to say, um, these questions. I'm going to carry on throwing out questions like this for the rest of the cut for the rest of the review, <laughs> and we cannot play the shut up. That's why card. It's it. I'm saying that now. The it's a, it's sure it's, about that. Yeah, I'm putting a bu- I'm putting a button on it. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna make no. it. I'm gonna make it difficult for us. We're gonna have to figure it out because I don't know how anyone could watch that and go, oh yeah 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 definitely one of those guys in, or or the lady managed to pick that old lady up, tie her up, tie up around her neck, hang her off the hang her off the ceiling. All in the instant it took the light to just literally flick off and flick on. Unless someone has a better theory? I don't think them light cables would be able to carry that lady's weight. Ah, well, yeah, obviously she's the devil, as we found out. This but, is true, yes. So so maybe there's a, there's a thing there, but... I, are you saying the devil is light? I'm saying... Oh, oh, well, he is, he is morning star. Well, he does work out, you know. <laughs> burns, burns a lot of calories. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I was going to say because the, the thing is, because the thing is, I think that I've I've seen films like this before with um uh, like Hitchcock's Lifeboat, and then it when it was given a B movie remake in science fiction with uh, Life Pod, which has that same thing. <laughs> Yeah, they weren't a great film. weren't a great film. I'm not saying <laughs> it's a great about film. Life pod. Fucking life pod. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't a great film, but it had the same premise of you're in a confined space with only like a limited number of cast and crew, and sure enough, they're all going to get bumped off one by one, and you know you're going to figure out who it was. And the thing I was going to say was, did you ever, like I say, I know I know the film's called Devil. 
So mm. pretty much the mystery's dead then and there, as far yeah, as I'm I did concerned. think that did rather tip its hand early on that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If we called it Kevin, that'd have thrown me off a bit. <laughs> yeah. Or Neville. <laughs> Lift. <laughs> yeah. Elevator. No, no. No, no. Oh, no, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> so you, Jesus, hang on, hang on. It's, that's my domain. Stop. <laughs> um, no, so, um, yeah, I, I was going to say, was there about much point in trying to create a mystery about who would possibly be the assassin in the lift so that the whole thing with you know the 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 lady the young lady's ex-husband owned the security company the guy who's the security guard is also a thug who was done for murder or done for uh, aggravated assault you know was there any point in building all of that up when the film literally shows you the devil reflected in the mirror within about two seconds of the film starting and on top of that then has it has a creature bite young lady and then on top of that has it appear when he does the does the the you know the flame and they're still doing this oh maybe he's got left the tools why has he left the tools maybe he's a murderer did did you see any point in any of that anyone it's just to string the story out, the the wafer thin story, isn't it? Mm. If you try and add little um, coincidences in there, and and a story to try and unravel, then yeah, okay, fine. You it, you're just threading it out ever so slightly, but mm. it it could have had more power if none of these guys were related at at all. Mm. And they didn't know they were related, and just having all of a sudden the lights go off, flicker, 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 someone's dead. Mm. It's kind of one of them mystery room type things, isn't it? But yeah. putting it into a lift, you get the uh, condensed, uh, closed spaces as well, and you could have like the paranoia that's going on there. But there, mm. were, even though they were trying to bring on the paranoia, it didn't feel like there was any paranoia to be had. Mm. Yeah, and that that is the thing, isn't it? It's just that you can't you can't create paranoia if you've literally given away the game the game in the title of the fucking film. Yeah. And then in about four or five sequences prior to the detective turning up and trying to work it out. I mean, did anyone get anything out of that? Anyone sit there going, "Oh, well, you know, they're working their way through it. They're enjoying that bit." You know, anyone? No, it was no, not for me. No, it was, it was, <laughs> it was a, it was a tough one because mm. it's, it's got stuff there that I could, I think anyone could really get into. Mm. They have a, a, a mystery that's going on. Unfortunately, as you guys have already said, it's on the box. Mm. It's kind of written on the box in big letters. Hmm. And you're like, oh, okay, well, this, this is going to be like a, a, a devil situation, isn't it? Because the yeah. film is called Devil. But, yeah. You could have had a, a good story where you had like a little mystery. It doesn't need all to be connected because that's mm. bullshit sometimes. Yeah. If everything's all connected, then no, you're right. I didn't mind mm. the twist of, of someone being the, the, the killer of the, the de- detective's family. Yeah. That kind of works. But then again, oh, everything's connected. Oh, yeah. No, he's, uh-huh. that kind of works, but you need that to work for the little, the punchline, basically, of mm. hi, you know, him standing up and saying, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to do my job. I've been waiting for you for ages. That yeah. could have been good there. That, that could have been, I don't know, that, that could have been like paying the, uh, the, the boatman, really, couldn't it? Yeah. I mean, that, that, that was the thing. I, I mean, I think, I think, the premise was a good one. I think the idea. I mean, I, I even said this to. I even said this to Carol before we started watching it. She didn't want to know. She didn't want to watch it at all. So she was just peace out as soon as the credits started rolling. But, but the you know the idea of well you know if you're going to put a mystery in a lift and you're going to have a closed box bottle episode essentially murder mystery, then you've got to be pretty damn clever with it. And the whole. The whole thing of just having lights go off and then suddenly, and then there was four, and then lights go off again, and then there were three, and it's just like it's not, it's 
that can be interesting though. Mm. But it isn't in this situation. No, no, that's it. It, it all felt, felt just slightly undercooked. Yeah. They killed them too quickly. Because mm. generally the approach with this sort of people in a lift thing, and I've seen it done actually with people in a lift, mm. is you go to flashback and yeah. each one has, you see something of their past and their own little story or, or they it comes out in dialogue. Mm. And I felt kind of, they sort of galloped through that. But yeah. it was kind of, okay, it's a short movie, blah, blah, blah. Don't, you know, don't hang around. Mm. That's that's good in these days where people think, mm, three hours, it should really be four. Yeah. And it's like, no, my ass disagrees very, very severely with that. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? At the same time, it's kind of, just what the timing was off. I kind of I kind of like a lot of the concept and like the ideas, mm. but I, I, I found that it, it's like hearing um, a band and a couple of the members were like half a beat out. Yes, that's what this movie sort of felt like to me. It was kind of like I can see I like what you're doing, I know, but you're not you're just not hitting the you're not hitting the beats right on this. Mm. You just and sometimes yeah, it's good to have a movie that takes you by surprise and you're not just going, yep, click, 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 you know. Mm. On, and because that's the curse of modern screenwriting, all the bloody writers have been the same fucking script school and do it all exactly the same. Mm. And why I like old movies, because people <clears throat> didn't have that kind of, oh, you've got to do it like this, you must do this, you must do that. And mm. films go like this tedious clockwork. And older films, people didn't do that, just, we'll try this. <laughs> and it's like... Mm. You, so, but with this, it was kind of sometimes it was a surprise, and other times it was kind of, oh, I think you jumped the gun there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or, or that bit should have happened sooner, you know what I mean? It's just mm. wavering round, round the point. Sometimes hitting it, sometimes not. Well, Jim, yeah. with, with the, the flashbacks, you build up the characters that way, don't you? Mm. Well, that's and, it. And I mean, I, li- I liked in the fact that the, the, there's one guy that was clearly going to be the annoying one, and they killed him first and quickly. And it's kind of, yep. oh, no, good, get rid of him. <laughs> Because he was pissing me off. off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get, just, just get get rid of him off the board because we know he's the annoying one. We know he's going to die. Don't fuck us around. Oh, you did? Oh, well done. I like that. Mm. But then some of the others are kind of, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, we're running out of suspects a bit quick here. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Uh, what, was he, what were you going to say there, Dal? Um, no, no, I, I, I totally agree. That bloke was fucking annoying. <laughs> 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 Please mm. kill him. Yeah, I mean the, the 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 one thing I think would have redeemed it for me, I think, would have been if the devil was one of the people watching the the events going on in the lift, mm-hmm. and he was one of the people. Because I thought at one point, I thought it was the um uh, the the Latino guy or the Mexican guy, you know, sort of, who who then does the, you know, who is then, you know, testing for toast, you know, and then all of a sudden he just turns around and starts giving it the, you know, editor spiritual sanctum, you know, sort of business down the down the microphone. Yeah. And I suddenly thought, ah, hang on. Like a fucking number station. Yeah, he's the number station. He's the He's the guy. You know, and he's talking about the he's he's the one doing all the bit at the beginning about his mum telling the story and all this kind of thing. And I thought, okay, so if if he turns out to be the devil, or you know the 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 protagonist, so to speak, the antagonist, then I will I will forgive this film. I will forgive this film because then you've got because the film gives you clues, it gives you hints, it nods at that, and you know, and you kind of like well, I can take that. But what I can't take and what I don't like is, is how can I put it, twists which are unearned. Does that make sense? Well, that's, yeah. that's M-Light, yeah. like, mm. isn't it? Mm. No, because when you watch something like, if you watch something like Fifth Element, for example, uh, not Fifth Element, what am I talking about? Uh, if you watch something like Unbreakable or Sixth Sense, that's it, Sixth Sense, that's what I was thinking. If you do Sixth Sense or Unbreakable or even Signs, all the way through the film the the hints are there mm-hmm. you know so with six cents spoilers for six cents if you've not watched it but for fuck's sake you know but you know the kids the kids breathing cold you know he's he's breathing you know you get missed out of his mouth and he's doing that 
and and there's Bruce Willis going, oh, what, you know, can you see dead people? And he's like, yes, all the time. And he's looking at Bruce Willis, and the breath's coming out of his mouth, and you're thinking there's a ghost in the room, mm-hmm. but you're not putting it together with Bruce Willis. And it's only when you go back to the film again and you go, ah, I see it. There was clues there, there were clues there, there were clues there, there were clues there. Same goes for signs, you know, with the girl leaving the glasses of water all over the place and the fact that aliens are landing near big land masses, they're doing it in the middle of America and all this sort of thing. All those things kind of are hints. And even even Mel Gibson's flashback to his wife being pinned by the fucking tree, you know, all this stuff is all built to make the twist and the reveal and the the climax make sense. If you just suddenly go, they all turned into fucking, they all turned into bats. The end. You go, why? What the fuck? Yeah. Why? What was that all about? You know, it just it's just a it's just a twist to go, aha, it is I, Leclerc, you know, and a twist. And if that's and that's what happened for me with Devil, is you, the lady being the, the devil just came out of left field and it was just like going, Okay and and I, it's just like it was it was such a cheap it was such a cheap cop out and the the film had been kind of fairly directionless as you say you could have had the guy on the who, whoever it was on the top of the truck which it was deliberately not showing you it mm. could have been it could have been the security guards you know because the security guard guy was sort of getting all religious and hokey at the top i thought it was going to be the cleaner to be honest the cleaner yeah which one's that oh what the first the, guy doing the floor when the thing yeah the guy that just ignored it as if, like, well, I knew that was going to happen. I'm just going to put my headphones back on and carry on. But even if it was that, I mean, it still would have been a point where you could go, ah, of course, because yeah. he was doing X, Y, and Z. Just to have the old lady just suddenly go, oh, she's dead. No, she's not. It was like, <laughs> oh, get a fucking, fucking, go get a screenwriting book and read it. Yep. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, nobody's mentioned it. Can I Can I mention something? Go on in, go for it. Go for it. Is it purgatory? What is what purgatory? The the building, the lift, me the, watching it, <laughs> the 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 whole thing. I I know it's an easy cop out, but is it because the first shot is of the city upside down? Hmm. And that suggests mm. you're kind of in limbo. Hmm. And then when the film ends, everything is the same shots, but the right way up and right going in the opposite yeah. direction. Uh, to be quite honest, if it was purgatory, they wouldn't. Surely they'd be isolated from everyone else. Well, they are because nobody saw the the. Um, everyone in there is kind of just there to witness what is going on in that lift. There's no one else witnessing anything else. You, yeah, you have like the the odd people in the foyer, etc. But they that's not a building's full of people. That is people just trapped it in. Maybe the building is kind of purgatory. That's why no one saw that that fucking DHL van roll down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so what you're now saying is the entire city blocks purgatory. No, because there was no one outside to witness that van doing that. But it didn't just do that. It went down the street. It turned left. It went down another street. It went turned right. And then it fucking ended up in an alleyway. And then on top of that, someone outside the building noticed that there was glass on the floor and was sweeping it up. And on top of that, another another window fell out of the bloody thing, which was just a, another weird situation. Another window just falling out. And it's just like, and, and everyone just goes, eh, window fell out. Yeah. Anyway, let's go inside. Um, I don't know. It's just a, an observation that I hadn't thought about this time round. That's all. I'll. I like the idea. I like yeah. the concept. I must. Yes. Say. But I think I'm not sure that it, there's enough in the tech to support it. No, no, that's true. And I think I think uh, you put more uh, thought into it. It's a cool it. idea, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the problem, isn't it? It's a cool idea, mm. and it would make more sense. But unfortunately, mm. the writing doesn't bear it out because it's just it's just fucking silly well the thing is with the old woman being the devil I think they were hoping they were going to get that kind of end of saw moment mm. 
mm-hmm. but that wasn't kind of how they were playing. That wasn't how they didn't play it right to get that. Mm. Because, you know, the great thing about the first saw is that moment where the body gets up and it's yeah. fucking jigsaw. I mean, mm. that's the kind of like, bang, that's mm. your reveal of the mystery person. You know yeah. what I mean? I think that's what they thought they were going to get. But you can, no, that wasn't what you'd actually played for. That wasn't, you hadn't set that up properly. Mm. Yeah, because, I mean, that's again, that goes back to the, the whole point. Is Do you mm. see the... You see the you, you see that guy lying on the floor from the start, and in mm-hmm. all the time there's he's sort of asking Cariels, Car- you know, who is this guy? And he's like, I don't know. He was just there when I woke up, sort of thing. And you you're kind of left with that kind of okay. So there's a body over there. Well, you forget about it, don't you? Yeah, exactly. But then when you look back, you can watch that film again and go, Ah, he's sitting there and he's fucking listening to it all and he's just he's just listening in and it, it makes a lot more sense whereas this fucking old lady gets up it's just like oh fuck off you just picked a twist out of the hat it yeah. could have been the, it could have been the fucking lift itself by that point i mean that would be a better idea as well yeah i was gonna say now i've said it out loud it could have been a better yeah idea. that would have been <laughs> that's proper borderlands type of thing isn't it yeah that's right oh god they're being digested by a demon they're in the oh. belly of the beast that would have actually made a lot more sense. In fact, that would have done. And they get, you know, the, the firemen cut through the cut through the wall, and there's no lift. Oh, there you go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that or would have the done lift it. Is, the lift is completely empty. Yeah, it hasn't Everyone. been built yet. Yeah, huh? yeah. It's a lift. It's a lift shaft that hasn't been completed. Oh, they've oh, gone to the wrong address. Story. Yeah. See. See, we got it. We Black got Dog it. Productions. Black Dog Productions. Here's a million quid. Go get yourself some blowing hookers. Well, this is a movie deal. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? I mean, we could any one of us could think up a thousand things that were more interesting than the the way that thing fucking concluded, or even the way that thing played out. Yep. Couldn't you? I mean, straight away, just by saying, just by saying, you're in the belly of the beast. I mean, it, they may, they even missed, they even must have thought they were being clever by having the building's number as three 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 instead of six six six. I mean, seriously, oh, <laughs> fucking. Oh, that shows how, how low budget that was. They couldn't even afford the full numbers. <laughs> no, they couldn't. They probably find it. They probably find it was a typo. Yep. I mean, go on, Dal. Oh, you ain't. Right. You suggest it only had half the budget it needed, really, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> half the ideas and half the writing staff. Um, Dow, yeah, you yeah. haven't you haven't said a lot about this. What's well, what's your thoughts on it? Well, it's just thinking about the actual premise and then we're getting in the lift together, right? Mm. Okay. Yeah, you, you have to ask yourself, like, could the devil actually be bothered with that kind of setup? Because you know. It's it's not like you can't turn around and say, well, he has to do it to get them all together to do this, that, and the other. And it's like, well, if he's got enough power to, you know, to to fucking engineer this so that all the people that need to be where they are are in that place, why not just wipe them out some other way? You know, yep. but if you want to, let's, let's go a bit spectacular and have them die in a plane crash or something like that. <laughs> well, I think that was missing because they I mean, invented all this devil law from captain jam <laughs> and um I, th- I think i think they missed the trick there really because you know you've got open book you're making this all up and mm. passing it yeah. off as uh, an obscure folk tale from, from yeah those funny foreigners who live over the border mm. um but you know you should have set it up though it's kind of it's like once every 10 years the devil can come to come to earth to Mm. torment people on this plane for so long and you know what i mean it, 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 there's ways you could phrase this you can make this you know be significant mm. it's like in um in dracula the origin of dracula that no one knows because yep. no one reads the book is that in the transylvanian mountains there is a secret school and every 10 years the devil takes on a class of 13 scholars who will teach his secrets to mm. 12 will be allowed back out into the world to use their powers as they will. The mm. 13th becomes the devil's a mystery on earth. Ah. And that student was Dracula. There you go. Ah. Yeah, so, so, you know, with this lift situation, you know, the, the idea that the devil, he, he's allowed to come to earth to physically torment us here outside mm. his own realm 
for a for one night on you know for for whatever mm. you know limitations or reading you want to put on it and uh, you mm. know that and if he succeeds in doing that that moves the doomsday clock a bit closer yeah you know what i mean something like that you could have given this that wider context mm. rather than he's just screwing around <laughs> you yeah know what I mean? he's a hobby yeah he's just uh, he's just dancing about you know yeah you know yeah, yeah. um okay i mean <laughs> I'm really. St- I have to be honest with you. I'm really struggling with this film because I I got nothing to really add to it beyond the fact that I thought. I th- if I look at it positively, I'll say. If I look at any positives, I'll say the acting, in general, was fairly good. <laughs> um, you couldn't you couldn't sit there and say that no one was sort of giving it their all. But, then you've got then you've got Mister Toast. You know, dropping his <laughs> dropping his toast everywhere and going off. Oh no, man! It is the devil. The devil is doing. It's just like, oh my god! You know, it's just, just he literally. He was literally just an a pole that was spewing exposition. Yeah. And when I mean, pole, the thing like, is, he started uh, off as quite a decent character, and then he just had these mm. turns where he suddenly became this kind. Of, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. He just. He, like, okay. like a Transylvanian peasant in some of the cheaper, <laughs> cheaper <laughs> films, you know what I mean? He's just there to, to spit folklore at you. Yeah. Go, oh, you were all doomed. Yeah. Yeah, doomed, doomed. Hi, I'm Ralph. Um, at first, I, I quite like the security guards. Oh, this makes a change, actually. You've got security cars who aren't just like fat, lazy, and asleep. Mm. <laughs> They're actually mm. doing a job. Yeah. <laughs> seem reasonably competent. Oh, that's novel. <laughs> Yeah, they did. You know, I mean, the the two. Yeah, initially it seemed okay, but it's just it just seemed like it didn't take more than five minutes before before whoever was writing because I know that Sham Shamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamal
but even that didn't really appear to be meaning anything. No, that was that was related to the um, Logan Marshall Green's character, wasn't it? No, then no, that wasn't. Uh, there was a, if you watch watch the film again, which I I don't oh, recommend. Right. Yeah, I thought you might, but um, if you watch it again, when he goes to see you know the jam the jam splat on the top of the um on the top of the van, yeah, there's a girl who's in like a forensics jacket. And she, oh her, yes, yes, yeah. And she goes around, and she doesn't really say a lot apart from detective. And she gives it this kind of hello, you know, we're we're being familiar but not familiar sort of thing. And then you see her a little bit later on when they're outside the building, and he's just chatting to her about nothing. Hmm. And then they get a call again, saying that he's got to go into the building, and he says he's going to take the call. And then he just looks at her apologetically and say, oh, "I've got to rush, you know, duty calls." Mm-hmm. And there's kind of a hint that maybe he she's the one he's having he's having a date with or something, but it never goes anywhere. Nothing happens. See it oh it any other character apart from the lady in the lift would have been so much better as the devil. Like mm. her. That that lady there. Mm. Kind of pushing him, just nudging him ever so slowly to to view in what is actually going on. That whole story was about, oh, the devil appears and then someone commits suicide and then um, mm. s- something happens, people die and then people witness what's going on uh, as the final act. Mm. And that could have been the devil just pushing him closer mm. and closer to the actual final act. But we didn't... Mm. We needed someone nudging Detective Bowden in certain areas and we yeah. didn't get that. No. And, yeah, and I think I think the... Part of the problem is you just you don't feel like there's any there's any hand at the tiller. There's nothing sort of steering the story, and whether it's the devil or whether it's you know the the story itself just going logically from one place to another. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> I'm hell. sorry, guys. It's okay. It was <laughs> bollocks. It's fine. It's not your fault. It could have been good. Has anyone yeah. got any last thoughts on it? Because otherwise, I'll. Otherwise, I'll just end up descending back to my list, and I don't really want to do that because it uh, I, I, I have one one last thought. Which <laughs> kind of, yep. Uh, again, this is kind of this could have been really cool mm. if it had been thought through, but I, I don't. I don't think the writers had the, the capacity to get it. They were no. reaching for it and fumbled it, mm. but it, it's based on something that, something that chimed with me. In the mm. uh, about the end of the film, mm. um, and it's based on kind of long years of observation and wondering why the hell did people do someone do that? Mm. Uh, but the idea that the devil can't take him because he actually has genuinely repented, mm. they sort of muff that aspect of the devil's deal, yeah, that's why the devil couldn't take him. And I think there was, a, there was kind of something really interesting there that could have been developed for that end point because the whole point is all the other people in that lift, they were the typical destructive, toxic people. Mm. What I've observed about these sort of people is they're not ever capable of taking responsibility, mm. let alone getting anywhere near something like remorse or yeah. <laughs> regret. <laughs> they won't even own it you know what i mean it's always somebody else's fault that they mm. did something bad yeah and it's kind of i thought you could have really built up that kind of that ending to underlie that point you know what i mean and that would have mm. it had a bit of weight and a bit of grit to it but i felt yeah. the kind of i do i do like movies that end as i call it old school going boom done roll the credits we're out of here yeah well this one's kind of like Oh, 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 we finished. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ten minutes <Yeah>. to spare. <laughs> but it was kind of. It could have been a bit more of that. There should have been a, mm. an, an emotional weight. You know what I mean? To that kind of, to the yeah. cop realizing, kind of, I realized that you know this guy has been suffering mm. all the years since that hit and run. He's mm. willing to own up to it. He's willing to pay the price. I could be angry with him, but I could beat him up and I could beat him again. But it would mm. never stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of that taking responsibility, and um, I, mean, I think there was there was a bigger point to be made there, yeah. uh, and a punchier ending that you know yeah. could have said something, mm. uh, like the Sixth Sense. That I think that's an ending that is more than just a twist. 
Yeah. It, it, you know, there's an emotional resonance to that ending, and there's a symbolism to it. Hmm. And this could have had it if the script had had more work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it would have. I mean it would have worked better if if the cop realised he could save Logan Marshall Green at the end by actually saying "I forgive you" over the tannoy. Yeah, yeah, that'd have been way better. <clears throat> yeah, mm. that you know, it's it's not it's not enough to repent. It's enough. It you have to be forgiven. Mm-hmm. You know, and that sort of thing would have done it as well. I think anything like that, and that, that's the that's the that's the frustrating problem with this film is. That five minutes of thought, and you could Im- immediately improve it. You can immediately turn around and just go, "Yeah, well, let, okay, let's just say, you know, let's just say the cops more is the key to it. You know, he's the observer. He's got a, he's basically passing judgment on these people. You know, he he thinks that they're scum. So as he thinks they're scum, the devil's picking them off. You know, and then finally he forgives the per- one person that he shouldn't be able to forgive, and that person goes free because he forgives him. Mm-hmm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You, yeah, you, yeah. You this could... <laughs> As I said when, when my initial, there's lots of interesting ideas in this movie, mm. or coming yeah. from this movie, yeah, but don't actually pan out. No, I mean you could literally you could take that story, give it to a dozen screenwriters, or even just four idiots on a podcast and make <laughs> something mm. infinitely better than what we got and i just that i think that's the frustrating bit because the premise is really solid i mean in some ways the real twist would have been if it had nothing to do with the devil yes if you just literally turned around and said it's called devil sure but is the devil in it no Actually, it is some fucking nut job who is on the roof of the... I don't know, is on the roof of the fucking lift. You know what I mean? Or, you know, or one of the characters, you know, in in that room. And they, ha- and they have a plan to escape once they've killed everyone. Well, how about this, right? Mm-hmm. Another yeah. interesting mm-hmm. uh, twist to this, right? Mm-hmm. What if one of the people in the lift mm-hmm. was actually innocent? Okay, mm. one of the one of the four the five people in that lift was innocent, mm. and this was part of the devil's plan as well, right? To corrupt, to corrupt a an innocent. Yeah. Okay. So what you have is you have nobody being able to see in the lift, right? There's mm. no TV cameras going off to show what's going on, mm. right? And the final scene, okay, mm. after the devil has offed. All the people around him is just left with the mm. innocent soul, right? Mm. And he can't sway this person at all. So what he does is he physically fights the person, struggles with him, mm. right? And just as the guy's getting the better of him, the devil disappears and the bloke's standing there with a knife in his hand. And mm. that's when the lift doors open and the engineers see everybody laying in bits on the floor yep. and this one bloke standing there... Mm with a knife yeah and then the innocent gets gets arrested and corrupted exactly. and that's the end of that yeah and there's no it's like well who else did this yeah exactly i mean there's a that, exactly it you could make a whole mystery of just not having anyone outside actually know or even if they know if anything's going on outside the contact that would have worked outside. better because if you don't have pictures and just sounds how yeah. it, you know, your mind just plays with that doesn't it exactly you could have done could have done so much with this idea if you were just telling you're saying you've got a one hour and twenty minute runtime, you know that you could you could off all these characters in the last five minutes or you could have them at each other's throats for the other sort of hour and you know panicking and paranoia and you know trying to help each other through and you know, that's the other thing. You know, if they started to help each other, maybe that was their redemption, you know, but they don't. And then when they turn on each other, that's when the devil takes them. Or, mm. you know, that this phrase? The the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was making people believe that he didn't exist. Mm. Mm. Except, except when he turns up on CCTV, leaves himself exactly. headshots and lets everyone record it and talk to him and then suddenly <laughs> leave a couple of bit of video footage and basically kills half a dozen people. Or live on telly, yeah. but apart from that, you know, he gets away with it. 
Maybe in, in another version, it is actually the lift engineer where he's uh, overworked, underpaid, underappreciated, <laughs> burnt out. This is sounding uh, dangerously close to home. Yeah, yeah. The piss taken out of him. And uh, yeah, it's just just utter shit, really. Yeah. 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 But that's the thing. You could have done that. You, that would have that would have made perfect sense because the thing is you do that thing you have the lift engineer guy around and every time someone says oh you know is it you fixed it yet and he's like yeah i'm working on it and next thing you know someone dies and it's like well how did they die you know but it's actually the lift engineers electrified the outside of the fucking lift so it's like a faraday cage and they just basically yeah. touch the edge and, <laughs> and they're dead and that's why the lights go out. You know, make it a yeah. make it an Agatha Christie thriller. You know, do something. But as soon as you introduce the supernatural element to it, you could you might as well just not bother. Just because it just stops turning, it stops stops making any sense. He literally give they literally give themselves, you know, carte blanche to wave their hands and go, um, um, um. It was it was the tea bags what tea bags you never saw them until right now they're in the corner of the lift and you're like oh <laughs> fucking tea bags did it it was the toast with the jam to lay down mm. Mm, jam yes tonight the toast will fall on the side of doom mm, yes yes but anyway all I've learnt from this film is that I have to check for the devil by dropping toast Yep. Which is the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Because that means 50% of the time, the devil's literally standing in my kitchen. <laughs> well, what about cheese spread? Does it work with cheese spread as well? I don't know. I don't know if it needs... Bl- various toppings. Black we, we jam? Black currant jam? Smooth or crunchy peanut butter? Well, exactly. Ooh, I, yeah, I, that could affect the airflow on. as it's falling. Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. I've got, I've got, my, I've got my phone here. I got my phone here, I'll, uh, and this will this will represent some toast and jam, because because again, what about pate? What about pate on on a bit mm. of toast? Yeah, it does depend on which pate. I think Ooh, so. Is it Brussels or <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, let's put this let's put this way, right? I've got my phone <laughs> now. What is the worst way a phone could fall? F- screen down, right? Yes. Right. A, okay. Oh, so I'm so I've oh, got surface. yeah. So I've got I've got it covered in a in a casing. So it's not going to damage itself, but I've got the phone and I'm going to yep. drop it now, right? So if it lands screen down, I'm surrounded by the devil. Is that right? Oh, right, mine right, landed on its back. Okay. It landed screen down. I've got the uh, devil. Uh, oh. No, I think it's just a chili <laughs> get jam, mate. It's just repeating on you. That's yeah, hold on. Hold on, I'm going to drop that, it again. That's not sulfur you smell. No, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not Beelzebub. That's that's uh, Beelzebub. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Beelzebub. Um, Beelzebub can't be bothered. Yeah, be Beelze, get me out of it. Um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I've dropped oh, the phone. Beelzebub, get me out of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I dropped I dropped the uh, phone the second time. It's it's it didn't land screen down, so I think I'm safe now. I think devil's passed by. But do check, do check. I I, I would I would definitely check everyone. You know, just make a piece of toast. Keep it out. Keep it to hand. It's my excuse yep. for a late night snack, then. Yep, that's it. Yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah. If yeah, basically, just remember, you know, in the Vatican, they in a glass jar, they've just got hanging on a piece of string. They've got a a, a piece of uh, like a whole king's meal loaf and a bottle of raspberry jam. And I got it on a I got it on a yo yo type system, so it just keeps going up and down, right? Yep. And if it suddenly flips over and lands butter side down, that's the mm-hmm. indicator. Yeah. It's up to date. It's an up to date system. Yep. Yep. No, I think I think it works. So there you go. So we've le- so we've learned so much tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly, don't watch this fucking film. Has anyone got any last thoughts before we move on? No, I am done. Yeah, you are done. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, well, like I said at the beginning of the um, beginning of the episode, next week we are away for a week purely because I'm away, and none of these other guys want to do it without me because you know they're lovely, they're lovely guys, <laughs> lovely fellas. Um, so um, yeah, so we won't be here next week, but when we do come back, we'll be coming back, and it will be Jim's choice of film. And Jim, 
Have you made a choice to the film? I have, yes. <gasps> so what will we be? What will we, we be? What will we be watching on the tenth of November? Well, I thought we needed a bit of a laugh, mm-hmm. and um, so I'm going for the Julian Barrett film Mindhorn, which is on oh. Amazon Prime. Oh, Mindhorn. It probably nice. won't be in two weeks' time. It'll be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, have That's one. That's true. Rolling have... the dice there, aren't we, with the Fortnite? Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, everyone watch it this week while we're off. I'll get. <laughs> I'll just. I'll download it onto my phone. Um, so there you go, Julian Barrett, Mindhorn. Now I've never seen this, so I'm looking forward to this quite a bit. I keep meaning to look, meaning to get it. I know it's on my to watch list. What about you, Darren? Have you seen this before? I wanted to, but never got round to it. Okie dokie. And Elton? Um, I, I, I've seen the the poster, and that's about it. Have I seen the poster? No, I don't know if I have. No. You can't Let, let's assume that no, I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, fair enough. And Jim, I presume you've seen it, obviously. I have, yes. Right, yeah. you have. And are you looking forward to watching it again? <laughs> I am, yes, yes. Lovely. Very much so. Lovely, mm. lovely, lovely. Well, the rest of us are completely clueless until we watch it. Um, so, yes, that's Mindhorn. So, ne- ne- well, when we come back next, not next week, when we come back next on the 10th of November, we will be reviewing Mindhorn. And, um, yes, if you've got any thoughts on this cast, um, about six twats in a lift or five twats in a lift, um, do send them in. Um, we'll read them out uh, to feedback at blackdogpodcast.com. Uh, similarly, if you'd like to leave some thoughts, uh, do leave them on our Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash blackdogpodcast. Or if you want to talk to the undead and you've got a, you haven't got a Ouija board to hand, go to Twitter, which is at blackdogpodcast. And before we go, Jim, what's happening in the wonderful world of Hypnogoria? Uh, well, in the next couple of days, I'll be dropping a story for Halloween, a commentary for the original Hammer Halloween, mm-hmm. and another chapter of my Halloween history. Lovely. Uh, plus, me and Teresa are on the Great Derelict, talking to Andy for a Halloween special about where sci-fi overlaps with horror. Ooh, I've... Oh. I, I I can feel I can feel I'm I'm trying to draw up a list mentally straight away where that happens. <laughs> I I suspect I suspect the works of Mister Mister R Scott and C, and and uh, you know John uh, Carpenter might might feature feature in there at some point. I think you'd be right. Yes. Oh, yeah, there you go. Mm. See. Oh. Mm. Yeah, they're the only two horror films I know. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay. Um, and Elton, over to you, sir. What about you? What's going on Rogue 2 at the moment? Uh, I, I've just been doing Grand Prix podcast. Um, I'm kind of, I've got a week off this week, and so uh, uh, attending to things that needed to be attended to uh, because of the house, etc. cetera. Um, so I, I might be recording a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure at the moment. I'm just trying to enjoy my week off at the moment. Good. That's good and well deserved. It is too. Mm. Well, we don't we don't want a devil situation in sort of like Essex. No, no, no yeah. that's great. We're, Darren, we're on the verge, but no. <laughs> <laughs> and and Darren, what about you, mate? Oh, you... just the usual old bollocks, really. Work. Oh, right. Okay. Fair enough. Cool. And uh, yeah, the usual old bollocks with me. Don't you know? Just go, go over to the Facebook group and meet us there. We we'll, we we're, we're all one of us. Some of us or all of us are on there at some point. So, um, you know, feel free to go over there and join in. Don't bother with my Instagram account. It's not doing anything at the moment. And same with my art station. But, you know, if you feel like going over there, look up Cartoon Beardy and find me wherever you find that thing. Anyway. (sighs) Right. Well, with that, let's end on a really high energy note (laughs) and say thank you, Jim. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Elton. You're You're welcome. welcome. And we will see you all next time, ladies and gentlemen, when we will be reviewing Mind All. Until then, take care. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you all soon. Tatty, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. -bye. Ta da.
Oh, bollocks to it.